So now it's getting recorded. We have everybody here today. Let me make sure. Yeah, we have everybody here today. I think it's five of you guys. Uh, I do have a class later on today. But yeah, like I said, man, no more than five. I like to keep it at a, a, a small a small group. That way, if, if you do have questions, ask me questions, bro. I hate, I don't, don't even mute your mics. I don't like that. I like, like feedback. I like, to, I like for you to, uh, you know, understand what's going on. Talk to me, ask questions as I'm going through it. Uh, usually when I start the call, I usually allow each individual to share their screen. Uh, when you start sharing your screen, I want you to give me at least one minute, one or two minutes. That's all I need. I don't need, you know, full breakdown of how you trade. I need one or two minutes of how you looking for a trade or where you start or what time frame you start on. Uh, I just want to get a feel of how you trade each individual trade. And then from there, once everyone is done, I share my screen and I'll show you a whole different style of trading. That's good with you. That's good with y'all. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah, it sounds good. good. So, uh, like I said, man, before I start uh, any class, I like to pray because I truly believe that God allowed me to, you know, be able to bless you guys. He blessed me with the strategy. He blessed me with the focus, stay on the chart. So now I'm just, you know, helping everybody else out with the same thing that he blessed me with. So if y'all cool, I don't know what religion y'all believe in. I believe in Christ. I believe in God. Uh, like I said, this is not for you, it's just for me, because it's giving, giving them back the glory and giving them back that thing. So if you don't mind, by your heads. Lord, we want to thank you for waking us up this morning, allowing us to breathe, uh, breathe air again. Uh, Lord, we just want to ask that you continue to bless us when it comes to the charts. Allow us to allow these men that are on us call to continue to seek knowledge when it comes to just charting and, uh, and taking trades. Lord, I ask that you bless them financially, Lord God. Bless their families, bless their moms and dads and family members who are um, that are connected to them, Lord God. Bless their whole family abundantly, Lord Jesus. I pray and ask that you protect us, Lord, from the things that we cannot see, the things that are in our way, in our future. Uh, Lord, we just ask you to just always be with us and uh, continue to show us your mercy and your bless and your your mercy and, and all the things you have you all the things that you have done for us, Lord God. We give you thanks, Lord Jesus, and we also ask that you just uh, forgive us for the things that we have done wrong in our in our past, Lord. I also pray that these men seeking Christ, not just the charts. Allow them to continue to lean on you, Lord God, and not their own understanding. Uh, allow this call today to be great. Allow them to understand everything, and I'll break it down. And allow the, their lives to be blessed, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. Amen. Yo, so now we got that over with. We're going to move into basically charts. I'm going to allow any like any any one of y'all can go first. But all I want to all I want to see is like one or two minutes of you breaking down the chart. And then just basically, you don't even show, you don't have to show an entry. I just want to see charts, honestly. I, I, guess, I, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess I can go first. Um, but um, I don't, I don't, I don't usually, I'm getting used to trading US 30. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm more used to um, NAS 100, but okay. I'm, I'm making the transition usually because I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of people that are usually trading US 30 now and I'm liking it. And it says, is kind of, kind of pretty similar. So I'm making the, the switch with your, with your strategy. Yeah. I'm gonna get more into it. But I'm usually not as 100. And I'll show you what, how I do it, basically. Okay. So I can share my screen now. That's cool. Go ahead, all I, need is, all I need is one or two minutes, brother. Straight. Are you able to share it? Um. Let me see. Share screen. All right. Let me share screen. Yeah, give me one minute. Okay. Yo, what kind of pair? What pairs are you guys trading? Like US thirty. And US one hundred. And that's one hundred. Okay. I'm looking at gold. On, go, go. I be on. I be on EJ. 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 Okay. Honestly, just trying to find a pair that works best for me. I haven't really found that yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and don't get me wrong, some of these pairs, man, are sloppy to me. Like, so like GJ. Like a lot of people trade GJ, but the wigs are crazy to me. I don't, I don't. Really, I used to try to trade GJ, but I don't mess with it really. But we, we'll talk more about it. We can see your screen. Can't can, can see my screen. Yeah, we can see it. 
All right, let me let me let me go let me go back to the pair that I usually do right now. You know what? I'm gonna just make an example out of out of out of Wall Street, the the US 30. So for example, I see I usually I'm usually a divergence trader. Okay. So I see this line up like this on the yeah. five minute. I see this lining up, bam. What I usually do is I see this mm -hmm. is uh mm -hmm. let me see what is that. That is a continuation divergence. So me. What I would do is really put a trend line. As soon as I see, as soon as I see this this line up on the bottom, yeah, I would really go like this, bam, bam, boom. As soon as they cross that line on the five minute, as soon as they cross that line, for example, it will cross right, right here, boom, it just crossed. Yeah, close yeah. right here, next candle. I will literally oh trade right there at the opening of this candle right here. Starts below the low the previous low and just write it up. And okay. then if I would have caught that one, it would have been a nice, nice, nice trade. Mm -hmm. And me, like like for exits, since since um I don't have I don't have all that all that psychology, I'll yeah. really put a trend line like this. And as soon as it crosses on the bottom of that trend line, like as soon as it starts like telling me that yo, it's about to go and draw down, it might go and draw down, I usually just exit right away. So I would have exited like right there, right okay. there. I would have exited. It. But I seen people take that like way like crazy high. But me, right there, I would have exited. And I would have, all right, cool. I'm done with that one trade. Yeah. But sometimes when I put mental mental stop losses, sometimes it, it'll even go below there, and then my mind be like, yo, it could still go up. It could, then I go over here and over here and over here, and before you know it, my account will be blown. Okay, that's cool. We'll we, we, we fix that today, brother. All right, that's, that's, it, that's it. That's it. That's it for me. Yeah, yeah. I just want to get a feel of how you're looking at the charts. Next okay. person, want to go? Anybody, Nick? Anybody else? I got you. I got you. And also, too, man, like, like <clears throat> the last couple of days, like, I had a couple of people who wasn't trading, who haven't been trading, like, the last, you know, month. So, if you if you don't want to share a screen, let me know, because I am going to, like, want to see everybody's screen and just make sure everybody's on the same page. I got you. I'll go. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, can you see? Yes, it's in starting to share. You can, you can yep. see it. Yep, yep, yep. All right. So yeah, uh, for me, I just follow structure, and mm -hmm. I may uh, mainly look for like transitions, like on like a uh, lower time frame before I enter and stuff. You so, what like? Where do you start on? You, as as far as like, that? what time frame do you start on? As far as like looking at structure. Or starting. Uh, I base I, I base my structure off the H four. Okay, H four. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then yeah, yeah, so I just go all the way down, and then just look for transitions, for entries That's that follow the trend. I see you you use the Fib as well. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yes, sir. What, what moving average? Is, what moving average is that? Eight eight close. Yeah, eight close. Okay, so you, you know about the moving average. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. All right, brother. That's cool. Uh next person wanna share the screen. I'll share. I haven't actively traded in like two or three weeks, though. So. That's cool. That's fine. All right. Yeah, I should be seeing my screen now. 
so this is odd USD. Um, when I'm analyzing structure, so I've been using quarter points. I've been trying to learn about divergence as well. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is just you know quick markup of you know trend lines and and understanding where the where the market is going. Um, so I start course out on a four hour and then go down and in the further time frame to see what the market is doing. You you also using the these black lines are just what quarter marks. Yeah, they're quarter points. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I used to yeah. do it as well. Yeah, I just I found it a little bit easier to use than the way it was taught in the course. Because mm -hmm. um, it, it seems like uh, price seems to respect the quarter points just a little bit more than uh, us drawing like the, the random lines. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, so, yes, so yeah. that's it. That's it. That's all I need. Um, next person, wanna go? Um, I, I can share mines. All right, let's get, it. let's get it. Logged in from from two different points. Can I see the screen? No, we can't see it. There it is. Or I think you clicked on the wrong one. The wrong one? Yeah, you might have to click. Yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. So, can everybody see it clear? Or should I um, reduce my charts? Yeah. Is it good? Yeah, we can see it. Yep. All right. So, I started using the three minute time frame because I'm, I'm used to, I come from trading penny stocks. Mm -hmm. So, I'm used to like the, the time frame. I fight the five minute time frame. I don't get enough confirmation for things. Um, but I'm mostly battling like, with psychology and whatnot. So you can see like on a four hour, like I would say I wait for like confirmation, like with, with, with um, from the bigger time frame first and you know, on overall trend, such as we can see here, like the, the uptrend over here, mm -hmm. like uh, inverse head and shoulders. So, and, and I'm still trying to learn the US 30. So I see like sometimes it would do like a fake out before yeah. it would structure then go back up. But I used, to, I used to look for this like in, um, Get yeah, the bigger time frames, and that is down there. That's that's cool, brother. I see you have a lot of screens. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I have a I have a forty three inch screen, so I could well, every, okay. everything's big for me. Oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. See, for me, I just straight off my laptop. Well, really, it's a laptop, but it's actually it's basically like a, a tablet, but it's a desktop tablet. If that makes sense. Actually. Yeah, actually I actually have like two twenty fours and one forty three because a, a penny stocks you need multiple charts and all, mm -hmm. all, all kinds of things, scanners and stuff. I feel you. But yeah, that's yeah. Good. that's good, man. That's good. I could tell that you own you're on the charts. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So like in, in, during the intraday, I would try to like use like my fibs, like of course on the, the bigger time frame with the four hour and stuff, but like to so try to get into trades now, because I'm learning, trying to, I'm trying to be patient. I'm a very impatient, impatient person. Like living in New York makes me impatient. Yeah, so I feel, I feel that. I definitely feel that. So I'm definitely battle, battling that. That's like my number one battle. So um, yeah. So I, I like put my fibs on the 15 minute time frame and such, and try, and try to catch a move and see how things move off the, the 38 or the 61 is where I really go off of. And the lines of a market structure like with the 50, percent I usually go off like usually those three. But I find myself missing moves or just being late and just not having confidence. So some trades I see, I just think it's too obvious to my eye and I wouldn't take it. Okay. We'll, we, we'll discuss more about it, brother. Or once I break down everything, it'll, it'll, clear, it'll clear some of that up. All right. <clears throat> cool, cool, cool. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, who haven't we got to? All right, I'll, I'll go. I'll go next. All right, let's get it. Y'all can see. Mm -hmm. Can you see right now? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So this this is the chart I'm doing US thirty. Um, and like I'm basically just following structure, right? Which is number one. I got see this trend line that goes down this way. Yeah. Um, I I I got lost in that sauce a little bit because when it reached down here. 
I knew this was a big counter trend. And down here was this 100% retracement support level. So I assumed the, I also, I, I, my bias was just still sell, sell, sell when it got like right here, right? Because yeah. I knew this was a lower high and this was, this was fucking with me right here. But um, this on the H4, I just realized didn't even show. This was noise um, when you go to the H4. So if I had that, that would have probably helped me out. But I just assumed that it was like still by the trend line. And then I was still looking for sales the whole time. It's, you know, it's, it's going up. Yeah. It made a, you know, it made a lower, well, not kind of like a lower high here. I mean, a higher low here, but mm. it didn't break structure yet. So broke structure here. Um, I should have look, 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 I mean, we're going to look to your left. So look to look at that lot, that second and last lower low. Right there in the middle. This one? No, lower low. That go down. Oh. Right. So you see, draw the line up under there. And just take it across the screen. Have we have we came back above and broke above that lower low? On the H4, it doesn't. So if no, I go to H4. H4 does too. On H4, well, I mean it closed. Yeah. If you look at H4, it stays above it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 what I'm saying is, what I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you this, and it's gonna make this a lot clearer. That's why I'm glad. That's, that's why I'm glad you guys are on the call, so I can teach you another way of looking at it. Once these lower lows are broken, so you see how it's broken with that long bullish, mm -hmm. to the left, to the left, to the left, go to the left, like that bullish. Yeah, that's the lower low. Go to the right, and then you see that bullish, that bullish candle going up, that blue going up, crossing that line. When it crosses back above that lower low to my left, that's an indicator for me that this this downtrend is becoming weak. Because mm -hmm. if, it, if it truly wanted to become, if it truly wanted to stay a downtrend, which it, it wasn't a downtrend, it would have came back to that line that you drew at that lower low, and it would have hit and bounced off. So it would have came back. That bullish candle would have came back, gave us a. Sometimes it might even give you a wick above, but it had to close below that lower low in order to truly stay in a downtrend. But look what happened. It disrespected it and, and kept pushing up. So right now, that's an indication, that's an indicator for me that this downtrend is becoming weak. Now bullish or buyers are stepping in the market. So what I do is flip my fit and I use that bottom and go from the top, see some bullish momentum. I mean, I need to see some bullish momentum. Yeah, I started from there. And I have I need to see bull I need to see bearish coming back down because I don't I get on I get in on retracements and you see how I push back to that sixty one percent inside that fifty to sixty one percent area. Should I go back on the one or keep on the four? I know you good. It doesn't matter. It's the same stuff. I stay on the four because it clears up a lot of noise on H one. But you see you see how I came back to that fifty to sixty one point one area. My mm -hmm. trade would have been inside there. Actually, I caught the straight. I'll show you more of it, but like, because I missed, because I was too busy selling, and I'm like, what the yeah, fuck's going but, on, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but but what I'm saying is like, pitch. And we was always told to pay attention to low, like lower highs. Make sure, like, wait for lower highs to get broken. No, wait for lower lows to get broken. Right. When the lower low get broken, you don't just jump in the trade, but that's an indication that this, this whatever trend is in or this downtrend is becoming weak. So what we do is wait on bears to push back down and we'll be getting in at that 50 or the 61.8 area. And, and, we, and we don't just get in on the four, H4. We just scroll down to the one minute and we'll be looking for structure to break on there. I'm going to show you, bro. I'm glad you put yeah. it. Cause we we're going to stay yeah. on the screen. Yeah. Um, is, that, is that everyone? Everybody share the screen? Everybody talked about it? Yep. So you saying you caught that like basically on a 61, right? Yeah, I caught it somewhere in there. I actually got in late because I was on call, but I had I had my overalls. The market did exactly what I wanted it to do, even right now currently. It's doing exactly where I think it was supposed to go to. But I got out the buys early because I fell asleep Sunday night. And but yeah, I still made thirteen thousand dollars Sun Monday, basically. So awesome. I I show you guys everything that I know. Let me see if I can show my screen. Last night I did these little markups. Trash. Uh, matter of fact, let me see. All 
I trade off MetaTrader too as well. So uh, I like, so because I, I place trades on MetaTrader. So I don't really, if I place trades on MetaTrader, I don't want to be looking at two different screens or, you know, my trend view or whatever. I want to see my trade as I'm marking it up. All right. All right. So <clears throat> I'm not sure if you guys know about the period separators, right? The period separator is from here. So this black line to this black line, if we're on an H4, is a total of a week candles, weeks, week, a week worth of candles, right? If you go to H1, this period separator to this period separator is a total, should be a total of 24 candles because it's 24 hours in a day, right? So, so what I like to do, I'm gonna just teach the same style that I show everybody else. And then we can go into, I'm gonna teach from back here and then we can go into what's going on right now later. So what I like to do is before the week starts, right? I want to point out key areas. And I'm only looking to take a trade until we get back to those key areas. If we're not in a key area, I do not want to take a trade, right? So what I like to do is see. So if I'm looking to take a trade from this week, so this is this is going to be the start of this week. I have to see what this week gave me. I don't care about what the two weeks did or last month or you know, weeks back. I just want to see what last week gave me because I know if it pushed from there last week, usually the market got to go back and retest those areas. We all know that as traders, the market breaks and retests and pushes. So one thing that helped me is the line chart. Do anybody else know about the line chart? Anybody used the line chart before? Yeah, I use line chart. Okay. So the line chart is basically where the market closed. Each candlestick shows a closing area of where the banks based off these numbers wanted to get to. And usually these numbers, if you pay attention to these line charts and you know, line it up, usually these numbers in these key areas are important places and the market goes right back to it and pushes from it. So what I like to do is see what the overall trend was for last week. So we clearly see what it was a downtrend for last week, right? Mm -hmm. You guys agree? And in a yep. downtrend, we have to be structure-wise, we have to be creating what? Lower lows. Lower highs and lower lows, right? So what I usually do is try to point them out. So market started up here, started up here pushed down, created a – stopped in this area. We don't know what's in this area. But we pushed up and created a lower, a lower high, right? So what I like to do is point out, you know, highlight that area. So now I know it's just, this is a key area. We pushed up, created a lower high, and what happened to this lower low? Got disrespected and broke. Boom, it broke through there, right? Market stopped in this area, created like a double bottom, right? But I'm really just focused on where the market stopped first. So, and then like later on, you see I'm gonna highlight, cause I know it's, this is an area. It's not just one point, it's an area. From that area pushed up, Basically went back and retest this lower low. Like we were just talking about uh, rolling. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Remember how I was just talking about these lower lows are important. That last one that you showed me had broke above this lower low, came back and retest and then kept going. This one, in order to stand trend, it went back to this lower low, right? Mm -hmm. And when it came back to this lower low, what happened? Another big push came breaking through this lower low. Boom. So the market went pushed down here. Now look at this difference. Like when it came here, it was pushed up hard. This one is giving me, you know, a U shape instead of a V shape. I know that this something is in this area. Like if you turn on the candlesticks, it's consolidating. Indecisive candles, up, down, up, down, up, down. But it is an area. It's where, you know, a lot of exhaustion was at. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight it. And since that was a major area, it pushed up a babe, like a, gave me a little baby retracement and then it broke through this lower low again. All right, you guys are getting it. You guys, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I have what? What is this? Let's count it. One, two, three, four. Four key areas of where the market made big pushes from, or where the market had broke through structure and continued to fall in the direction it wanted to fall in, right? And plus, we clearly see that it's a downtrend with this trend line. I mean, the trend line is not accurate, but it just it's a, everything is below it, right? Showing me structure. So now what I want to do is basically go into like highlighting everything that I'm teaching is going to be off structure. 
structures, structures, structures. Today would be the last day that you or yesterday, whatever, even this morning, if you used to trade, today would be the last day that you use in uh, indicators and not looking at structure. Everything is based off structure, right? So now I'm just highlighting these zones of where the market made its big push the week before. So now I got four key areas, right? We clearly see it was a downtrend. So now I know I don't wanna take trades until we get back to these key areas. You see it? We are at a key area. Now I should be on the charts. When we are in this, if, like if we are inside of this area, inside of this area, I don't wanna take trades inside of there. You see how it came back to the same area that it broke? It broke, never came back and retested. And then when it came back to this area, what happened? The market started to make its big push again. Broke above, broke below, uh, broke above this lower low. Where did it go? Came back, retest. We was already looking for buys because it broke below this lower low. That's an indicator that this trend may be changing. And where did it go? To the next key level. So that's two winning trades that I'm, I'm already in for this week. But let's stay, let's stay on, let's let's stay and let's let's continue to look and see what happened. We had lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. And then what happened right here? Test another break of structure. A break of structure. Higher high. A break of structure. I consider this a break of structure. Why? Because it's lower low. Was starting to get broken with this bullish momentum broke and then it actually had a candlestick that closed above this lower low if this was mm -hmm. just a if this was just a bearish candle coming right back i would have been like okay that's just a retest it's not truly a break but look it had a, a full out when it's when a market opened at five o'clock eastern time and gave me a four hour candlestick to close above this lower low to me, this downtrend is, is dinner is dinner dead now. We're we're looking. I'm I'm placing my bibs looking for buys, right? You guys seen it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and the way that I draw my fibs, we was always taught, you know, with fibs, I always use the top and the bottom or the, the bottom and the top right and look for a trade at the 38% and usually take it from the 38 to the 27. We was always taught tops and bottom. For me, I draw my fib different. For me, if I'm so, if I see break of structure, we pushed above this lower low, and I'm looking for buys now because that's an indicator, right? All this right here is an indicator that this trend is, is going to be going up. This downtrend this week. For me to draw my fib, I need to see bullish, which it already gave me bullish, and I need to see at least one bearish candle. And when I get that bearish candle, I put this on the top of that bearish candle. If all these were bullish, 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 I'm not putting up my fib yet. I need to see at least one bearish candle, right? Mm. And from and this just come from experience, bro. I've been on the charts the last two years and I only missed five days of not being on the charts. And it's really because of the military. But like from experience, when you draw your fib from bullish, I usually say sometimes the opposite, the market always usually come back to this 50% mark. It always hit the 50% mark. Not always, but it comes super close to it. Majority of the time, ninety percent of the time, it hit that fifty percent mark. So now, I know just off structure, right? Even if, even if you draw up a trend line, so even if you draw up a trend line, so boom, you know all you need for a trend line is point A, point B, point A, point B. What happened right here? Broke the structure, broke the trend line, gave us like a double bottom, broke trend line broke structure because this was the lower low we pushed above which indicated to me that you know this, this downtrend is starting to become weak so now i need a pullback so i can get the best entry possible so when it gave me this h4 i already have my fib ready and now i'm looking for it to go where to this 50 percent mark right and this is on h4 so now when we are pulling back to this 50 mark what am i'm doing Bonds. Going in smaller time frame. Smaller looking time. Breaking structure. Yep, 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 yep. I'm looking for breaking structure on smaller time frames. 
Like I said, usually it, the market will always get back to the 50% or touch it. So I drank the C4 shit. Now it's like, all right. So this is the this is the bullish that four hour candlestick that I just showed you that was bearish. It's all these candlesticks here. My fault, my fault, my fault. Bless you. Bless you. Right on, right on, right on. So look, when we come to the when we come to the M1 time frame, right? Hold on. So when we come to M1 time frame, what is clearly happening? What is what do we clearly see? Bearish structure. Bearish structure. Right? We broke above that lower low. We broke above that lower low on H4. Now we got our fit play because it gave us a bearish. We're looking for it to get to the 50, but what do we clearly see? Nothing right in this area is telling me to buy. We also are at a key area. Matter of fact, I need to, I need to pull because I usually draw out that. Um, let me see, I messed up. So when you highlight these zones, pull it out to this next week because we don't want to take trades until we get back into this area. And then and it ain't, people have, like, it doesn't like, it doesn't matter what size or how big, don't draw it too big because now you're just taking up to space. You want to keep it small. But now look, so we, we pull him back. So it gave us what we need to see a bearish momentum. We got the bullish, we got a break of structure right here, break of trend line. Now we just looking back, we looking for a pullback to the 50% area, right? So we got the bullish again. And when you go to the one minute, what, like, like we just talked about it, what do we clearly see? A downtrend, right? Downtrend, downtrend, lower, basically lower lows, lower high, lower lows, lower high, lower lows, lower high. This trend line has been respected. Even if you wanted to like to draw up a point A and point B, you can use this as B or use this as B or use this as B. That's, or you can say A, B, C, D. This trend line is still respected, right? And we already know, or like what I'm just telling you, trust me, the market always usually come back to the 50 mark. So we this that, that keeps us from taking bad trades, right? Yes, this is a key zone, and we should have been looking, we should have been on the charts when we were in the key zone, but we also know that the market usually come back to the 50 mark or get close to the 50 mark, right? So we are patient. We looking for the market to get to the 50, or if, even if it came to the zone, this trend line was still never broken. So nothing is telling me to take that trade, right? So I'm still, I'm just letting the market play out, letting it, letting it come to my 50 zone. And then once we start to get closer and closer to my 50, I want to draw up a steeper trend line. So it can be from here to here, right? So we got a trend, we got a lower low. Let me zoom in one more time. So I'm drawing up a steeper trend line as we approach in our 50 mark, which was looking for, you know, bullish momentum anyway. So as we're getting closer, I see lower low, created lower high, breakthrough. Lower low, pushed up, created lower high, broke through. created a new lower low, pushed up, lower high, breakthrough, and then what happened right here? Break, that break. break a structure again, right? Just like the H4. Remember when we, on the H4, we broke through that lower low, right? That's an indicator, right? That this downtrend is becoming what, weak? You guys seen it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 when, and when the downtrend is becoming weak, it's, it already gave us bullish, right? What do we need to see in order to draw up our fit? And, uh, uh, that, uh, that bearish candle. candle. Bearish. We need to see bearish candle, right? right? So if we just broke through the trend, we broke through a lower low, it already gave us a bullish, it already broke through that. So now we need we get in on pullbacks. These candlesticks right here are not bearish. These are all going up, going up, going up, going up. Even this one. So as it's going up though, don't get me wrong, I am placing this on top. So it pushed up. Probably, I mean, from here, it pushed down and then went up. 
from here, it started right here, pushed down a little bit, and then went up. Started right here, or actually it started right there, pushed down a little bit, then it shot all the way up and came back down. Nothing has given me a good amount of pullbacks until we get to this candlestick. Mm -hmm. This candlestick right here, yeah, it's in the bullish, started right here. It pushed up, gave me a baby wick. And when he gave me that baby wick, I'm placing my zero up there because I need to see a bullish momentum. I put, or I'm at this point, we guessing we we got the wick, but then it start to push all the way back. When it's pushing all the way back, where do we take our trade? What 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 area we take our trade inside? 50 to 61.8. 50 to 61.8. So my, my entry is somewhere inside of here. Usually, sometimes I, I just catch it at the 50 every time and just. And like on US 30, I use I use um, US 30, I use point tens because it's easy math. So point ten at this 50, we got break up the lower low, push above that lower low. That's an indicator that we, you know, this this downtrend is changing. Now I got my bearish momentum because I already have my bullish. I, I, now I can place my fib. And as it's pulling back. On this one minute, bro, when you're trading on one minute, you have to be on a one minute chart. You got to look at structure, break, getting broken. So when it's pulling back, I'm taking my risk. We all take risk when we place a trade. But now I am confident in my risk because I see structure getting broken. I get, I'm getting my pullbacks. I don't want to enter while the market is already going up. I need some type of pullback. So now I am in the trade. What drawdown am I in? None. If we're Damn using, or none. If we're, using yeah. a point, if we're using a point 10, my drawdown is $8, believe it or not. On US 30 because we are on a one minute. And, I, and like I said, bro, when I'm trading US 30, I'm willing to lose at least $500. I'm willing to lose $1,000, but like with this entry, I can lose, you know, I can cut that in half and say I'm willing to lose, you know, $500. So now my entry is back here at the 50 or 61.8. My drop, like if we're using a 0.10, usually when you use a 0.10 on US 30, you just take off the last digit on these first four of them. So this would be three hundred and twenty nine dollars that I'm in drawdown. So I'm my drawdown is still like going further down, right? Because I'm willing to lose five hundred dollars. If I got five, if I got four thousand or five thousand, six thousand, I'm willing to lose a thousand. But let's just say I'm willing to lose five hundred on, on you know a clean setup. My stop loss is down here at five hundred and what five hundred and five hundred dollars right here. Y'all seeing this? Mm-hmm. Look at this. We are at a key zone, and we know on H4, yes, we was at a key zone, but all this is just wicks. All this noise right here is nothing but wicks on bigger time frames. That's how my entries be inside of wicks because I'm scrolling down to smaller time frames and looking at candlesticks. Them wicks on bigger time frames are nothing but wicks. And those and, and these candlesticks, these candlesticks. On smaller time frames are nothing but wicks on bigger time frames. But these candlesticks on smaller time frames still stays in structure. A lot of people just think the smaller time frames are just, you know, smaller candlesticks. No, it's actually giving you structure. So when structure was broken, if you, and, and the line chart helps with it even more, when structure was broken, it's lower low. We got to push above. Now I'm looking for a pullback using my fib. I need to see bearish momentum. Got in right here. Look at the reward. Look at the reward. So my entry is at this, this green. Look at the reward. Using a 0.10, that's $361. Pushing up, pushing up, pushing up. 500 You know, taking it to $1,100. And look, we already got our key areas from this H4, right? Why not take it to the next zone? 0.10s. Now we sitting at $1,500. $1, $1,500 on a, 50, you know, 15 bro. $1,600. Why be greedy? Another thing is why be greedy, bro? When, like I, like I told my mom, like when I left my job, like $500 a day right here will keep the pain away. $500 a day will keep the pain away. $500 a day is $2,500 a week, which is 10,000, 10 grand a month. Like who's, who's making $500 a day? Nobody. Corporate wasn't paying. I was getting paid 70, both jobs. They paid me $75,000 a year. And I still wasn't making five hundred dollars a day. Five hundred dollars a day, and then look at the amount of time. Like, bro, look, we took the trade right here, right? If we're using a point ten on US thirty, because it's easy math, 
I actually use it. If you go back and look at my posts, I use point tens to keep my risk of reward. So I know what's going on. We would have been out the trade somewhere right here, right? So somewhere in this area. Look how long, look how look how short amount of time that took. We, we, we are on the one minute, so <clears throat> let's just say let's push it back just a little bit right here. <coughs> look at the time. That's nothing. An hour. That's an hour. I got my five right. out. What am I greedy for? I got my five. All I'm right. Out. All right, cool. So um the the, the fit that that's what um where do you place your point A at? My point A? Yes. What you mean as far as like like the beginning, the beginning. The hundred. You're talking about the hundred, right? Yes. So the hundred was at the bottom of the the bullish candle, right? And then the, the zero was at the the top yeah, yeah, of the yeah, bearish yeah. candle. Yeah, so so I, I got my bullish momentum. So I, my my one hundred is here because I'm looking for buys because of breaking. Okay, got it. Right? It broke yeah. through the lower low. It gave me bullish momentum, so I'm just starting at the bottom of that bullish, and then it gave me a quick bearish momentum right here, right? And then it pushed up, breaking through this higher high. And a lot of people ask, like, scaling in about scaling in or second entry. If I'm looking for this market to go bullish, in order in order for it to be a bullish market, it had to be breaking through. It had to be creating higher highs and higher lows. So when it's giving me a higher low, I know this higher high has to get broken in order to stay in another you know, stay in the um, uptrend. So when I take this entry and I start to see in the market come back to these higher highs, because I, I already believe that this is over, this downtrend is over. We got our head off the 50 on a bigger time frame. We got structure getting broken on the M1, created a higher high, and now they gave me a higher low. I got in right here. Now we're starting to push above, coming right back to these higher highs. I'm, I'm taking another entry right here, bro. Or like I said, you can be patient, let me see. Quick question. Yo. Um, the bigger trend line that was drawn on H4, correct? Yeah, uh, no, this this bigger trend line came from M1 still. Okay, it was on the M1. Okay. Yeah. So and like I said, on the bigger on the bigger fib on H1, I mean H4, we was looking for a pullback to the 50. This mm. this, this this trend line that I kept, that I drew up here just helps me stay disciplined and not take a trade. This right here is an early trade. But why? It wasn't really an aerial trade is what we was looking for anyway, because we was looking for it to hit the 50. But look, mm -hmm. if you was still wanted to be patient, because we are still overall up under this overall bigger, uh, you know, bigger trend line, right? Like if you still wanted just to be considered like patient and making sure, you, you know, you're doing everything right. Look at this structure doesn't change, bro. Like people, like people sometimes trust in indicators and don't even trust structure. Structure doesn't change no matter what pair I'm on. Whether you use it from, you know, because this higher high was broken with this candlestick. So I can break above. So you can start right here or you can, it doesn't matter. Start right here. We need to see what bearish momentum in order to get in a trade. This right here is not bearish. This is, to me, that's still bullish. If anything, give me another, you know, give me another bull bearish going down and show me some bearish pressure. It couldn't even go down and just push, continue to go up. This one came down, just retested this kept going this right here is bearish momentum right and look we got a break of the trend line right so boom mm -hmm. top of this bearish we got bullish this is one big bullish move momentum on probably on you know uh, on a 15 minute chart this is just one big bearish candle i mean bull bullish candle now we starting to get some bearish momentum when we got the bearish momentum where do we take a trade we got a break of trend line as well where do we take the trade Deep. It's out our 50 to 61.8 area, right? So now, boom, like say for instance, we took it soon after it hit the 50. We are in a straight. What drawdown are we in? If we're using a point 10, we are down $29. What drawdown are we in? Look at the reward. That's 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 another company. We got a break of the overall trend line. We got our bullish already going up, pushing above, breaking the trend line. We waited and on this bearish momentum, right? It started giving me bearish, bearish, bearish. I'm like, okay, now I'm looking for a pullback to my zone, you know? You guys are saying this? Yeah. yeah. 
giving me a pullback to my zone, it get, come around this fifth year, I'm already just jump, I'm jumping in the trade because I already know if it plays out, my, I'm not gonna be in drawdown too much too long, bro. Went down. You, still wait for the, you wait for that candle to close though, right? No, I don't wait for the candle to close. Oh, you still going on the wick then? Okay. Yeah, I'm going in on the wick, bro. Because I want if you if you like if like I had somebody yesterday last night that asked me that. He said he would wait for this bear, this bullish to close. And then wait for your retest. Yeah. He missed his entry. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they don't give you this retest. And look, he would have took his entry right here. Why be in drawdown? Why experience yeah. the drawdown? If you if you don't have a big account, why be in drawdown a hundred dollars if you're using a point team? I don't want to experience. I think, I I think the biggest the biggest issue is because people are lost in the sauce, right? Exactly. They, 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 exactly. they lost in the and in, in the time frame, so that's why they're afraid to do it because mm -hmm. it might be still really a downtrend because it is a downtrend. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah, so. but, but we scroll down to we scroll down to the one minute and look at this. Even if you consider this this area a, a, a lower high, we broke through that lower high, and now we're starting to break through it. Came back and like retested these, like structure is structure, bro. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Came back and like when we just talking about risk. What I'm showing y'all is how to have a better risk to reward. I'm not treating you. I'm really not even, people say, you know, your strategy, your strategy. I'm really, it's really not even my strategy, bro. I'm literally teaching y'all better risk to reward based off structure and scrolling down to the one minute. I usually tell people, if you're not looking at structure on the one minute, you might as well go take your money out the bank and throw it in the sewer. Why? Because structure is structure. It's, the, it's, it's, it's what you need. Like you're saying, some people yeah. are scared, you know, they, they wait on, you know, bullish first. That's what the market wants you to do. Because once you start to see this break of this higher high, most people are like, okay, I'm going to take this trade. Matter of fact, I'm going to, but look, most people be scared and be like, okay, I'm not going to get in trade into here. And now look, they're experiencing hella drawdown. Yeah, make for them want to quit, yeah. Yeah, for me, I'm taking my, I'm taking, you know, my trades at the, inside this zone, that way, even if it continue to fall, you know, I'm still willing to risk $500. So my stop loss is still going to be all the way somewhere down here, which was never hit because structure is breaking. I'm confident. And like I said, it's based off of experience. I've been on the charts for, I've been on the charts forever, bro. I always see this happening. Whenever you see bullish momentum and see bearish, draw, look at that 50, look at that 50 mark. Wait for the market to get close to that 50 mark. We was always taught, you know, hot top. Yeah and bottom yeah. and then when it gets to the 38 take a trade but every time i was taking trades at the 38 it was steady pushing down and yeah take it to the 20s you know when people say you know i took the trade but it, it went and hit my stop loss then you know went in my direction this this saves me from that bro like and it comes from just experience that i had in the market like usually when you see bearish momentum or bullish and then you got your bearish the market always comes inside this 50 mark and I, and it keeps me from taking bad trades. You see, even if you use this bottom, like right here, I had to start it right there, but like, even if you use it from, you know, this first bullish, you need to see bullish, which it gave us bullish, gave us bearish. We don't take the trade until we come back to where the 50 mark. So, so um, after a bro it, structure, would you have to put your limit order after 50? You don't, bro, when it breaks, like, like for this, bro, you have to be on a chart manually. Because you can't you can't predict you can't predict structure, bro. Mm -hmm. This mug could have been pushing. Uh, this mug could have just kept going bu bullish, 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 and I wouldn't have even been able to draw my trend line. I mean, my fit. Say for instance, yeah. not, if say for instance, it kept going bullish, but I seen like right now. Pushing, yeah, if it would if it would have just kept going bullish, and then it started giving me bearish up here. Now I'm looking to take a trade somewhere inside this area. You feel me? I'm saying, but, but after that happened, like you own it manually, do you, you enter your orders like somebody just would have been a let me order a market order. I do, I, well, I do it manually, I do it manually with the strategy. I do it manually. So somebody's mutual mic, I can't hear you. Who is that talking? Somebody's mic is breaking up. Do you hear me? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> somebody saying something, or was it somebody in the background talking? Bro, like, like, bro, when you when you're using a strategy, you have to be on the charts. You gotta see structure getting broken. This pullback, 
Like you have to be on, you have to be like, we don't know if it's even going to get back to this area. It could it could have kept going and given me bullish and stopped up here. And now my fed play would have been different. My fed would have been up here where it stopped. And then if it started giving me bearish, I'm still looking for a trade inside my 50 mark. So it all changes. You can't predict structure basically. But when you start to use this strategy on a higher time frame, which don't try to do it like Q, bro, the difference, the difference why, bro, Q bangs, bro. He understands this. He knows how to do this, but he has got so much money. He got so much money and he knows exactly where the key areas are that he can just take the sell. Once we, like you see how we got this blue, you know, as our key area, he can take buys right here and be dry. I know you should, if you, if you follow him, he'd be like, you know, my risk was $20,000. He already know that this is a key area. He already knows this might, you know, do his thing, but he already know that it's, go, it's, it's eventually going to pull back. You know how we said we was looking for it to pull back to the 50? He already knows that. So, so why don't he just wait for it longer? He doesn't have to. His account is, he has thousands of the millions in his account. His drawdown is at 20K. This is only at 5,000. Was a stop loss hit? No. Go, go, bro, go, go to his page and, and look at his trades. He be in drawdown. Bro, be in drawdown. <laughs> don't get me wrong don't get me wrong don't get me wrong bro he knows how to get needy and greedy and look at details at the details but why he's a millionaire he has a big account he don't have to do this bro he knows how to do it if he did if he was to go broke tomorrow bro he can pull out of no i get it the the, the yeah. point is is that it, that's where it starts to go up yes you gotta know this before you can even get to you know buy limits People be people be posting buy limits and sell limits with you know no more than 500 or a thousand dollars in their account you know how dangerous it is? Think about this. Q gave somebody, I think it was James, he gave James the, the torch challenge. James failed it. Why? Because James is used to buy limits and sell limits because he's a millionaire. He don't have to go and get greedy. Like he doesn't have to get so detailed in smaller time frames on his on his big account. He's willing to risk, you know, a thousand or, or twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars before it actually go in this direction. We can't do that as traders. We're not gonna say wait, but like people with smaller accounts cannot do that. We have to see structure getting broken right you know trend line structure and when structure is breaking that's when we get the best possible entry so that we won't blow accounts most new traders blow accounts because they're taking trades too early they're taking buys here yes we're in a key area but that doesn't mean that we just take the buy right we have to go down to the one minute and look at structure this is clearly still downtrend that's why i drew this overall trend right here on this one minute, somebody's like, where it came from? I drew this overall downtrend to keep me from taking buys right here. Yeah, it right. never broke, yeah. It never broke this trend line. We got point A or if you want to B or C or point A, point B. My trend line is still not broke. So I'm not even looking to take a buy. And look, it came back. Yes, was structure broke? Yes, because this was clearly a downtrend. Structure started to break above right here. Yes, structure was broke, but are we still up under this trend line? Yes, I'm not really looking to take a buy. Wait it, and then, like I said, like I just talked about, the market always pulled back to the 50. So once we're getting closer to the 50, that's when I want to start getting on the charts. This is the banks, all this up down stuff. This is the banks. People be like, oh, we just broke above, you know, the lower high. Let me go ahead and take the buy. Yeah. Matter of fact, let me show y'all something. I'm gonna show y'all something quick since we are on this. The banks like when we think like or when new traders enter the market because that's easy for them. They don't understand structure. So look, or they don't even understand, you know, pullbacks. But look, that play that this trade played out perfectly, right? I just want to go over real quick. So it came back to the 50, right? Where do we take it to the next key area? Or you can take it to the 27 extension. Every time, majority 90% of the time when it pushes out the 50, it goes to the 27 extension. So you could have got out the trade right there, right? We we go back over it. But I want to show y'all something real quick. Mm -hmm. Look at structure. So it pushed down, created lower low, right? Pushed up, created a lower high. You guys agree? <clears throat> yep. Then it broke through this lower low. When it broke through this lower low, did we ever come back to retest this area? Even on a launch chart, did we ever come back to retest this area? Not on this time frame, no. No, 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 no. So, but most traders don't even pay attention to structure or they don't pay attention to key areas. So when it's breaking, they like, oh, and, and usually we always get in late because we'd be nervous because the wick is all the way down here. They, they start waiting for, you know, it to go past the wick. 
So once once this candlestick start to push down, they're like, oh shoot, you know, we are in a sale. Let me go ahead and sell it. Hey, mutual mics, everybody's talking. Let me see. I can make that talk. So now we, we pushing down. So new traders would be like, okay, let me sell this market. So they sell it. Look what happened. It pushed back up on them. Now they something thousand stop losses are hit, draw down like crazy if they still got enough bread in their account. So now it's pushing back up bullish, right? So another thing that new traders do, they're like, oh shoot, we just going back to, you know, to retest that area. Let me go ahead and buy. So they buy. Look what happened. Market pushed down on them. Another loss, right? So they like, ah, oh, shit, you mm -hmm. know, this is, they like, ah, oh, you feel me? This right here is just, you know, a lower high. Lower high. Let me just go ahead. Once we start to break, you know, this lower low, it's going to continue and create a new lower low. So once we start to break here, I'm going to just go ahead and take another sell. Take a yeah, sell. I know which one. Boom. Another loss. All because they couldn't wait and be patient for the market to come here, right? If we broke through there, we already know that it has to come back and retest that same area. These wicks are not good enough. Wait for it to come back, and when yeah. it come back, get in the market. Look at the recent reward. Now we take it. Boom. We know we got to go back. You could have took it to here. That's still fourteen thousand pips. Or we know that we have to break through this lower low to continue to be in a downtrend. So why not hold it and wait on structure to show me to get out? You getting paid? Same thing over here. We broke right here, right? Have we retested? Have we retested in this, any any of this area? No. No. So where am I? Where am I looking to take a sale for this week? Over there, yeah. Once we start coming, and then like I like I posted the other day, if you see a bullish candle pushing strong like this, hella strong, don't try to take a sale when you see it it's already pushing up. Wait on this next candlestick, right? Wait on this next candlestick to try to take, or or wait for the candlestick to show me bearish before I even enter the sale. Stop trying to take a sale when you clearly see people will see this bullish forward. It'll be somewhere right here. And then people try to take a sale right there because they're looking for structure. Bro, this mug is pushing. Mm -hmm. Wait. You will save majority of your money if you wait. Like something like here. People try to take sales when it's already pushing hard as hell. Wait for the next candlestick and then scroll down to the one minute to show you structure. Right? So we broke. We're looking for a trade in this area anyway. Also, if you like, once you study it long enough, you know that this is a, you know, it broke through the lower low. You know that this is bearish pullback. This is a counter trend for this overall sale. So now we have our fib. The market has to get to the 27 extension. Let's scroll down and let's look at it because we, we took the buy down here at this, this orange and we're looking for it to go to the 27 extension, right? So let's go to the one minute. We took this buy, right? We hit our 50 mark. We're taking the word to the 27 extension. As we are approaching the 27 extension, which is another key area right here, what is going on? What do we see? What do we clearly see? Oh, you need to point A, point B. Uptrend, right? Point A, broke through structure. Point B, now I know I truly don't want to take a sell until we are on this side of the market, right? We came back to our key area, but clearly when we came back to our key area, we still above the 66 moving average. We are still above this point A, point B trend line. And also we know that when we took this buy down here, the market has to go and touch this 27. Have we touched the 27? Nothing is telling me to sell this market, right? <clears throat> so now I'm saving my money and not falling for stuff like this and waiting for the 27 extension to get hit, I'm waiting for my trend line to get broke. It got broken right here, so. Even if you did like try to take the sell, cause it, it does look like, it looked like it's lining up perfect, but we know that the 27 has to get touched. So if you would've took this, we got the bearish, we got the bullish. I mean, we got, yeah, we got the bearish bullish. We would've been looking to take a trade right here. So I would have took a trade right here at the 50, but this much steady going up. As it's going up, bro, I'm not even, as it's still pushing up, I'm getting out this trade. My stop loss would have been somewhere right here, close now. Now I'm only risking, now I'm only losing, if, you feel me? Now I'm only losing $91 with a point, point 10 because 
it's pushing the button. If it wanted to continue to be a downtrend, it would have came to my 50 mark and showed me at least some be uh, bearish momentum, right? So now this is nothing but news. This little spike down below this trend line is nothing but news on, uh, it's just nothing but a wick and news on higher time frame, right? You guys stand with me? You get me? Let me try to follow you. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm, I can start pulling this down or I can just say this was news. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna place it right here. I'm gonna point A, point B, and I'm gonna consider this a point C. And now we actually finally hit our 27, all right? We are in a key area, don't get me wrong. And as we hit in our 27 <laughs> extension, what am I doing? I'm drawing up a steeper trend line on a line chart. I'm drawing up a steeper trend line. Here to at least, I need a point B right there. Look at structure. Right here, higher high, because we are in an uptrend. I'm looking for these higher highs to get broken. Let me change the color. Mm. We don't need this purple, this top purple anymore either. This is just the area. So as we get closer to this area, we hit the 27 extension. As we're getting closer to the 27 extension, I can get a point, point B, point A, point B fit. We're right here, it created like a baby higher high. So are we still above this trend line anyway? Right, we hit our 27, and we can start looking for a sale possibly, but we need to go down to the M1 to see every, a break of structure. So if we turn back on the candlesticks, we don't truly get a bearish momentum until we break this trend line. We broke the trend line, came back, retested, pushed up a little bit, and then we see a clear bearish momentum, right? Pull back to retest a little bit, but then it steady fell. Like that's what we want to see. We got a break of trend line, we got the bearish momentum falling down. Clearly see a strong bearish. Look at the difference. This is bearish momentum, but look, a strong, solid bearish candlestick, right? And it gave us bullish going back. Also with the break of trend line. So if we got our bearish going down, we got our bullish going up. Where do we where do we take the trade? At that at that 50, 60 one, yeah. Exactly. We got a break of trend line. And I'm pretty sure, bro, like structure is getting broken to turn on line charts. We got higher high, higher, even structure right here. So this higher high was broken right there. I mean, it came back below it. If it was going to continue to be an uptrend, it would have came back to this higher high and kept going. But it pushed below. So that's an indicator to me that this uptrend is starting to become weak. And then if you turn back on the candlesticks, it's starting to give me exhausting areas. This is nothing but can this is nothing but wicks on a bigger time frame. And, a lot and this of, is at the, the, the 27. Where can you zoom out for a second so I can see that one more time? 27 on the on original fib. Because you remember we was looking for this original fib, it was at 50, and we take the trade from the 50 to the 27. Took the buy, yeah. So yeah, and now you're taking the sell. And now I'm looking for a sell because we are in a key area, right? We are in this mm -hmm. key area. Remember this key area on the H4? Yeah. Remember it had not retested until now. It's starting to, re starting to retest. But you remember that bullish momentum that we seen when we came back for this retest? I don't just yeah. get in on that bullish. I have to go down to M1 to see structure before I take a good sale, you know? And then when you go down to M M1 and see structure, yeah, we back, but nothing is telling me to sell. We were clearly above the 66. We got our point A, point B down here with the trend line. Nothing is telling me to take a sell. Even right here, I would have been iffy. Like I would yeah. take a sell, but like as soon as it blew past my 50 mark, I'm like, okay, let me get out. I might have jumped in too early. And I'm waiting on more structure to show me. Now my stop loss is short. It's, it's my, my stop loss is, you're going to lose trades, but like my stop loss is so close because I'm looking at structure. Structure didn't start to break into up here. It started to give me these pullbacks back below these higher highs. Yeah. This higher, higher area. 
and, and and you see it pulled right back like structure doesn't change even after it broke through it pulled right back if, even if like i don't really pay attention to you know higher lows or lower highs but look if you was to draw a line at this higher low right look at structure candlesticks it pushed down but it came right back up this is not a break this is a retest pushed down but came right back up this is not a break this is a retest this one pushed down came back up i would have been like okay that's just a retest but look it start pushing down with more bearish momentum so when it start to push back down with bearish momentum i'm like that's what i'm looking for right and then also with this this trend line it's starting to get broken. I already, I already have my point A. Yeah, point yeah. B. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm starting to see that bearish momentum. I need to see bullish in order to take a trade, whether you put it right here or right, we on an M1. So whether you put it right here or right there, we're looking to take a trade where and what side inside of what area? Yeah, 50, 60. 50, 61.8. So our trade would have been somewhere inside of here. All right, and then you scale it, you 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 um, getting in the rest. What's that? Then you getting in on the rest on the next entries. Yeah, you can get in right here if you wanted to. I don't I try not to take the second entry, bro, but, but this is the lower low. If you turn this is the major lower low. So once we start to break this lower low, you can take another entry. Your drawdown, your drawdown would have been what twelve dollars. But then look at the reward, you're already up, you know money but look we took the sale right here at this red look at the reward why be greedy point 10 red why be greedy we are already up eight hundred dollars nine hundred dollars nine hundred dollars get out that's a thousand dollars basically get out why be greedy we already know that it has to come back and you know Usually the market would get to the next level because we already have our key. The market's just jumping from level to level. So we could have just held it until it came back to this next level for $1,500 with a 0.10. You know, but structure don't change. Like even then, like some like some people ask, you know, why you take it? This, this was a break of my steeper trend line. We could have waited on because all this is bearish. All this is bearish. This is bearish. No, it ain't even no counter trend. This is straight bearish. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, retest, let lower low right here in this area, retest it, continue to fall down. So now we know that this is straight bearish momentum. Now we starting to see some bullish momentum down here. Starting to put, let me clear up some of this chart. But just remember, this is the key area. This is the key area. I'm gonna clean some of this up because I don't want to look. I don't want it to look sloppy. We got bearish momentum, starting to get bullish momentum. We had a break of our overall trend line. It was something like something like that. We got a break of it. Where do we take a trade? Inside our 50, 50 to sixty one point eight. We took the trade right here. We was back in our key area on H4. Even if you take the trade right here and using a point 10, drawdown would have been, like I said, I'm willing to lose $500. This is $300 that you would have been drawdown. And like I said, depending on your account, bro, you can use a point zero one. That's still only $32 that you're in drawdown, $35 that you're in drawdown. If I'm using a point 10, my stop loss is somewhere up here for 500 or is really for a thousand. So 10,000 10, pips. I, I, I can take this any given day based off structure. I'm taking this any given day. Or you can be patient. You know, like you could have drew, you could have drew up another trend line, you know, because it's making an uptrend. And say, I don't want to, I don't really want to take a trade until this trend line is broken, right? Because structure doesn't change, bro. Go back and practice this. Trend line was broken, right? So we got our bearish. What do we need to see? Bullish. And when we got our bearish and bullish, damn, we could take the trade where? 50, 50 like right here. We would have been in the trade right here. Like structure doesn't change, bro. 
Hey, yo, so you weren't really waiting for like any type of like candle. Not, I know you say you weren't looking for like, uh, like I don't do, I yeah, don't yeah, no, no, like you don't do like any type of rejection either. No, you don't wait for. No, I don't. Uh, I don't. Candlesticks lie, especially in golf. I don't even care about in golf or, or unless it's like a weekly candlestick or a monthly, because now I know that if, if it's in a golfing on a weekly, which is still not true, but like majority of the time, engulfments are engulfments for a reason. If this is giving me an engulfment on a weekly, now I know that possibly the next two weeks can be going in that same direction. But it still doesn't tell me a good entry. It just gives me an overall bias a little bit. But engulfments are, are fake, bro. It's not really true. Like this candlestick right here, right? You can say it engulf all of this, you know, this, all this. Look how long it pushed down. Most people would be like, okay, I don't even really know what the engulfment is. So, I just know it like it covers a lot of other candlesticks. But, like this one cover all of this, push almost twice as much. Most people are like, all right, let me take the sale because this is a strong bearish momentum and golfing, whatever you want to call a candlestick. Boom. Take the take the sale. Look what happened. You're still in drawdown. Right. I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't mess, I don't pay attention to engulfings, bro, because they can lie. Look right here. Is this not an engulfing candlestick? Is this not a engulfing? It's it covered all these last three candlesticks, right? This engulfing bull is going up, covered. It took like a stop right here, it opened right here, stop right there. All these three candlesticks right here are inside that engulfing. It engulfed all of those. But look what the market. So most people are like, okay, I'm buying because it gave me engulfing. Look what the market did. Fail on them. Yeah. Pick the bread. Don't trust engulfing candlesticks. Trust structure. Cut on the line charts. What do we clearly see? Uptrend, 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 uptrend. Right? Boom. What happened? Break a, break a support, a break of that structure on the line chart. And then line chart was broken. We got our bearish momentum. What do we look for? We need to see what in order to drop up our fit? That bullish candle. We need to see bullish momentum. We got our bullish momentum in this candlestick. Where do we look for our trades? 5061. Take the trade 5061. Boom. We somewhere in here. Or like I say, sometimes when I hit the 50, I'm already in the trade. Boom. What is drawdown? No more. If I'm using a point 10, no more than $122. I can take that. Or even if then I can put my stop loss right here for 200 and $250. Was it hit? No. Look at the reward though. We already up 400 some dollars, $500. Like I say, $500 a day to keep the pain away. $500 a day, pay rent, pay car insurance, pay car notes, $2,500 a week. You could take your girl out every, you know, every weekend. Okay, well, when's your next entry? My next entry? It'll be... It'll be After that one. My, my next entry would be based off structure on, on um, H4. And sometimes, don't get me wrong, bro, that's why it's important to draw up key areas off H4, because if it's not in a key area and you're looking for a structure where it's not a key area, you might lose that trade. That's why it's important to draw. That's what, what was the first thing I did was draw up these key areas. So boom, boom. Here was a key area. Here is a key area. Here was a key area. And I know down here is a key area. So I don't want to take sales or look for them that type of movements unless we were back in these key areas, right? Yeah. Even for this week, I mean, this week after it. What do we clearly see? A downtrend. So now I know in a downtrend, uh, rolling, majority of the time is, I'm gonna draw one right here because this is where it broke. Majority of the time when we're in downtrend, majority of the time it's lower lows. Most of the time, 90% of the time, pay attention to these lower lows is getting broken, right? Where do we break and having came back to retest? Lower low pushed up. Like we we overall came back and retested this lower high and we destroyed this lower low right here. Yeah. Destroyed. We destroyed this lower low right here too as well. Where do we look to take a, 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 a another sale trade? Because we were overall. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, because we, the way we were doing it before was different, bro. It's like, yeah, it was a little. It was complicating, and I was like, "What the fuck?" That's what I'm saying. We used to pay. Well, we was always taught, you know, lower highs. But it, but but it's good now. It all makes sense. That it makes sense, bro. And like I said, sometimes you gotta highlight it. 
you know, highlight it. And now I don't want to take this helps. This helps me from taking bad trades. I don't want to look for a trade until we get back into this area, right? Boom. So now I know because we just broke through, haven't retest, retest, haven't retest. We were clearly in the downtrend. Now I know once we start to get back up here, I can be looking to take a sell. Scroll down to the one minute. Also look. We got bearish momentum. Remember, remember this was clearly a downtrend. And then it started to break above this lower low, right? So this was clearly a uptrend. Matter of fact, just turn on the long chart. Downtrend, we start to break above this lower low. Y'all came to the 50. Where do we take the trade? That's pretty smooth, bro, yeah. Easy, bro, it's clarity. And then even when we are getting towards the 50, we don't, just, we don't, we, we scroll down to what? A smaller time frame to make sure we are looking at the same thing on M1. M1. Right. You guys see it? Yeah. Hold on, I'll be right back, I'll be right back. Yo, can y'all hear me? Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So yeah, we got bearish momentum, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. We start to see the lower low get broken, pushed above the lower low right here, closed above the lower low. Now we got our bearish momentum, bullish momentum, we looking for a trade somewhere inside of here. And now once that, and we scroll down to the one minute, and we take where? To the 27 extension, get out. Same thing over here. We got bearish momentum. We start to see a break above this lower low. Came back and gave you like a double bottom. Yes, it gave us wicks. That's, and this is why we scroll down to the one minute because nothing is telling me to buy. Even though it's coming back to give me a double bottom, nothing is telling me to buy. It's still, if you go down to this one minute, it's still giving me a downtrend. That's why I draw up these, these uh, go down to the one minute and draw up an overall trend line and wait for this to get broken. Cause it, it would have it still been giving me a downtrend. So nothing is telling me to buy. But then we started to get a push above, like for a double bottom, push above, give us a, you know, uh, higher low. And then look, it still matches up. We got bearish momentum. Right, bearish momentum. Bullish momentum, because we're starting to get a higher low. Double bottom, higher low. Where do we take a sell? Yeah. Boom. Where, where, do, where do we take it? 27 extension. And I got out early. This is a trade that Q put it on his put on his chart and was like, damn, put it in the chat. I was like, damn, I missed it. Why? Because it was giving us bullish momentum to come back to retest. If anything, it came back and retested 66 uh moving average. The structure was really yeah. not right. Easy, easy. Yeah. Bearish momentum. Bullish momentum. And then I, after that one, then what? After this, it's it's so. This is how my boy made $10,000. So we had 
Bearish moments. This candlestick right here is what broke through all of this. We got bearish momentum. So what are we doing? Patient. We waited on a bullish momentum to happen, right? And where do we take a trade? In our 50s, where do we take the trade, right? 50 inside this area, right? If you go, if you turn on the line chart, because they I had a lot of people that was just confused. This right here is too much, it's just one line, right? You don't really see like key areas, right? But if you go to the one H H1, what is it showing? What is it showing now? You can see the clear lower highs and lower lows. I'm not gonna highlight it, but look. This is the lower low, because it's clearly a downtrend. Lower low, right? Lower low. Lower low, and then it occurred at one more lower low, and then look what happened. Broke through all these lower lows. Y'all follow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We already we already looking for the market to get up here, right? From Because overall, we are in a selling market. But the more that you can go back and practice this, you will be able to catch these buys. I caught this buy, right? I caught this buy. Boom, I was in a trade somewhere down here somewhere. I caught this buy. Why? Because I knew that we have to come back to this 50 mark. Before it came to this 50 mark, it was giving me a retracement. And then look at structure. Lower low, lower low, lower low. Disrespected all those lower lows. So what is that an indicator for? This, remember, this is the overall selling that we're looking for, right? Because we got our bullish, we got our, I mean, we got our bearish, right, on H4, and we got our bullish candlestick going up, right? So now we're looking to take the overall sell in this direction. But if you go down to the M1, I mean, H1, we see these lower lows get all, all of them got disrespected, right? And if you turn on the trend, if you draw up a trend line, trend line is broken as well, right? Trend line is broken. And when a trend line or, you know, structure is broken, we got our bear, bullish going up. What do we need? We need that 50, 60. We need bearish going down. We take our trades where? Inside the 50, 61.8. So when the market started coming back here, let me make it, let me highlight it, make a different color real quick. So is it like a is it more like a scalping type of method or is it like not, long not term? Because really. this right right this right here that I'm teaching is counter trading. This is this right here that I'm teaching is counter trading because we already know that the overall move from the fib on H four is inside the fifth. This is the fifty six one point eight right. But when you scroll down to M, M H one. It just broke structure on H1. So now I know, and we already know that. Do we have to go hit the 50, right? Mm -hmm. do, do we got to go hit the 50? Yes. But before it hit the 50, did it hit the 50 right here? No, but it's pulling back. Why is it pulling back when we know it has to come back and hit this area, right? Yeah. It's because structure was broken. Now we have to respect this 50 area on a fib. When it started giving me bullish, and start getting me bearish, I know that it, it usually come back to this 50 area. So when it's coming back to the 50 area, where am I taking? This is just how you, this is how you, this is how you trade more. And, and don't get me wrong, it's dangerous, it's counter trending because overall we just, we could have just waited on the sale and took it to the 27 extension, which my boy did. He made 10 bands and passed his top tier challenge. Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah. Caught the, I caught the counter trend because I was bored. I was bored. No, I get it because you see, you know, you see yeah. what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. You see what's coming. We have to get back here, but it started to retrace. And also look at structure. Structure was broken with this candlestick. And when structure is broken, the same thing we've been doing, you know, H4 or M1, we have to see bearish momentum. And when we start to see bearish momentum, we do what? Scroll down to what? One minute time frame. So is this method only for counter trend trading or can we use it for like regular analysis? It's well? not, it's regular analysis, bro. The overall move was going back to that 50 and looking for the sale. What I'm showing you right, right, now, right now, right now is counter trending. So as it's coming back to this 50 mark. What do I see? I draw up my trend. Trend is not broken, right? 
this trend line is not broken until like right here. Structure started to change right here. I actually got in this, I got in this, I got in this um this buy early and was in drawdown for a little bit of pips right here. But like trend started to change. What I did is did something like this, and I got in the trade. Because it was close by the 50, so I was just waiting on you know structure to change. And I got in right here. When it gave me this, I got in at the 50 and was just draw down. Let's just say we was using a point 10. Was draw, draw down $91. But look at the reward, start to push up. Start to break through my trend line, right? My actual steeper trend line. How'd you know it was gonna break through the trend line though? It was just off confidence, bro. Structure and confidence. Look, created a higher high. We broke through the higher high, right? You see, it was a higher yeah, high. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean, don't get me wrong, in a, in, a, in a downtrend, this is a lower high, right? But when it came back and gave me this double bottom and then broke through this higher high, now I know that this is starting to become an uptrend. And now usually in order for it to stay yeah. uptrend, for it to usually stay in the uptrend, it has to come here to this higher high, right? And push off and, and keep, continue to go higher. But uh -huh. we also know from experience in the market that it could give you that little down, down, you know, this boom going down, going out. Basically what it did, it gave us bearish, bullish. That's just a retest to come back to retest that higher high. That's why I was in drawdown a little bit. If it would have worked out like normally what it would have done, it would have came down, came here, it gave me a push, wick, continue to go up. But I didn't, it doesn't matter because I was just waiting on structure to get changed. This lower high and this downtrend was broken, which means now this is a higher high. Market come back to this higher high. Gotcha, yeah. Yeah, but look. I got it. I see it now. Trend line is broken, right? Trend line is broken right here. Not this. These two are not bearish candles. This is bearish momentum right here, right? These are not bearish momentum. That's not bearish. It's just, this is just like speed bumps to slow down. The market just can't give me one big, long, you know, bearish, bullish momentum. It has to give me like a little speed bump, stop, slow down a little bit. But this right here is bearish momentum. We got our bullish. Right. Let me delete this. Bullish, bearish. What do we take to trade? We got a breakup trend. We also got a break of what? Lower low, because we also still looking at structure. So it broke through this lower low right here in this area. And when that is when that happened, when it breaks through this lower low, we look, we need bearish momentum. We already had our bullish. Where do we take the trade? As soon as it hit this 50, sometimes, like I said, I try to just take it at the 50. We already in a trade. What's drawdown? It's $9. What's the key area that we have? Yeah. What's the key area that we had to get to? Look, the 27 extension, like I said, whenever it pushed off the bigger time frame 50, it came close to the 50, but structure already started to change. These 50 marks are important. I don't want to take a trade in, unless I'm in close to this 50 mark. I need to see structure getting changed at uh, close to the 50 mark or either touching the 50 mark. It started to break this trend line, right, that we had drilling up right there. So my entry could have been right here. I took the trade right here early because, like, bro, I just trust myself. And even then, if I even if I took this trade early, my stop loss was still somewhere down here for a thousand some pips, which was never hit. If I'm using a point 10, my stop loss is down right there. Yeah. So I, so I took it area. I already know that we the 50 area is right here. I trust my analysis is don't need, and don't think that it's gonna, you know, go past the 50 area because I already seen structure on H1 get broken. But even if, even then, if I waited on you know structure to change or trend trend line. Like this trend line, if, if I waited on this trend line to get broken and took it right here inside this blue, take it to the 27. Yes, we get a pullback, back, but this pullback is nothing because my stop loss is where? Somewhere all the way down there. And I trust my analysis to get out the 27 for 20, you know, $2,500 off 1.10. And also, what else do we know? We also know that we had to get closer to this 50 mark from the overall selling. Door. Like this that I'm showing you is just counter trending, but it's, you're starting to see it connects. It's like a, everything is starting to connect, connect, connect. Because we knew overall from H1 or either H4,
overall, this is the area that we're looking to take a sale, right? Why? Because we had bearish, we waited on our bullish. Where do we take a sale with our bearish and bullish? Somewhere here in our, inside our 50 area, right? Mm -hmm. So we already knew, you know, this area right here is where we want to take a sale. Once we come back to this 50 area, we was already looking to take this 50. Look, I'm going to just show you this 50 to the 27 extension is how he made 10 bins after, and he did it after our call the next day. Like the next day he made 50 bins and we were so excited, sending me screenshots and everything. But the overall, we know we was in a what downtrend. Somebody had asked me, like, you know, I forget what you had asked, but overall we were in a clear downtrend, right? So you could have just been patient and prevented this kind of trend. I took the kind of trend trade because I know what I'm doing, right? And I took it off. I still, I still didn't just take it off because I know what I was doing. I just looked at structure, and that H four, that H four line chart. It was just one big solid, you know, one line just going down. But if you go to H, if you go to the H one, it's clearly a downturn. And look at these lower lows. It got disrespected with this stuff. This momentum pushed all the way above, and we know once a trend line is pushed all the way above. What do we need? We got already got our bullish. We need to see bearish momentum. We're looking for a pullback to the 50. And when it's coming close to the 50, what do we do? We went to the M1, right? And we took the buy until it got to the 27 extension. Yes, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But overall, mm -hmm. but overall, this is the move that we're looking for, right? Because we're looking for the market to come back to this 50 mark. Overall, we are looking for the market to come to this 50 mark. So even if you don't catch this counter trend, which is dangerous, if you don't practice counter trending or if you have no experience, don't do it. Just wait on this movement, right? I'm going to highlight it. So Doesn't I'm sorry, but I missed that last part. You just said you said uh, some just don't do it. What are you talking about? Counter training. If you don't, if you haven't practiced counter training, don't do it. The, you know, everybody says it. Q says it. The trend is your friend, right? Mm -hmm. Overall, we seen on the four hour what a clear downtrend. The last three weeks, the last four weeks, what well, was on this week, but the last three weeks because this is these are weekly, you know, weak amount of candlesticks, even though it's H four. Last three weeks were bearish momentum. Why would I be even looking to take a buy? But did I catch this buy going up? Yes, why? Because I knew we have to come back to this 50 year. So as it gave me my bullish, my candlestick was already set, but it started pushing back down before I got my, you know, touch the 50. So I, I was able to take this buy, but don't do that. Stay with the trend. Stay with the overall trend. Overall trend is a downtrend. We are up under 66. We clearly see it's a downtrend draw up you know, trend line if you want, but we are clearly in a downtrend. So just wait on that move instead of trying to catch this buy that I had caught. The trend is your friend, stick to the trend. So we're approaching this 50 area, right? This is our trend from H4. We are approaching a 50 area, right? As we approach in this 50 area, As we were approaching this 50 area, right? Cause we don't, we, we ain't taking these trades. This is how, you know, lose, this is how traders lose their money because they're trying to trade too early. This is not a key area. This is not close to my 50. This is that 38. Remember we was always told take trades at 38. This is where that 38 mark where most traders that was taught, you know, 38 to 27, they take these, these sales and look, they get their money snatched. Why? Because we wait when we use the bearish and the bullish we wait for the market to get close to our 50 before we can even think about taking a sale. Look at all this consolidation. It would have took a, a sale right here because it created a lower high. 
took a sale, money got snatched. And this is US 30, these are points. Market pushed all the way up, they would have been like, oh shoot, you know, we in a bearish market, pushed all the way down, money snatched. I'm gonna leave that alone, but like, look, as we approaching this 50, cut on a line chart, we clearly see, we are, as we approaching this 50, we are clearly still above 66. So I'm not really looking to take a trade, I am patient. Yeah. I'm drawing up, I'm drawing up fibs, point A, point B. And as we're getting closer, closer, I'm drawing up more fibs. Fibs is your friend. They treat you well. As we're getting closer, I can be drawing up more fibs. Boom. Trend line is what? Broken right here, right? You guys agree? We're closer to we're close to the 50, 50 right above our head. This trend line is broken, right? Y'all agree? Yeah, start, yeah. start the break. Structure, this whole little area down here. Structure is starting to break. You guys agree? Look, broke. Now, that's that's telling me, you know, all I'm looking for is a pullback because all this is just bearish momentum. Now we got a break of the other trend line, right? So now I got... All this bearish momentum, right? What do I need to see? Bullish. This this candlestick is not bullish. This candlestick is not bullish. Like I said, if anything, it have to give me two bullish candlesticks to show some show some power. This one gave me a little bit of bullish. Came back, gave me like a double bottom type. Where do we take a trade? Where do we take the trade? 56.1.8. Are we near to 50? On an overall, yes. Overall, we are near to 50. Was structure broken? Yes. The, the steeper trend line was broken right here. The overall trend line was broken as well. Structure was broken right in this area. We broke it below it. Now we're just looking for what? We got our bearish momentum. We just need bullish. And when it gave us our bullish, look what happened. You win the money, a point ten. Now you up three thousand dollars, thirty eight thousand. Did we get a pullback? Yes. The next day we got a pullback to our area, but overall we was looking to take it where to the twenty seven extension from the uh, four hour fit. Y'all see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Easy. And then even even though we are getting this pullback, trust your analysis. Use 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 stop losses. Trade with somewhere up in here. We, like I said, for me, I'm gonna lose a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars. If you if you have a smaller account, use a point zero zero one, and just say you're willing to lose fifty to a hundred dollars. I don't even know where is it at. Just say, for instance, we're willing to lose a thousand dollars, which would have been somewhere right here. We got a good entry. We were confident though in our entry. Because we've seen break of structure and everything else happening. So stop loss is somewhere up here. Something let's just say right there for nine hundred dollars. If we're using a point one point ten, it still never really truly came back in that area. And even even if it started to push above here, I'm skeptical. Like when it starts to truly push above here, I'm looking to get out before it even hit my stop loss, right? Because I'm so confident in this. If it starts to push it back. If the market start to push back above my entry, yes, sometimes you may get a week or two. But if it's pushing back above my entry, I'm gonna forget that stop loss. I'm getting out early. I don't want to be, you know, losing more money than I should. That just means that my entry wasn't as good, which is just, this is a fantastic entry. It pulled back and like came back for like a break even, but still, like I said, like my stop loss right here would have been at five hundred or something. Right. We are already looking for this 50 mark to be even strong. This 50 mark is so strong that it couldn't even get to it. But look at that port. Look at this pressure that has sent this market flying. When structure was broke, it sent this month flying for 74,000 pips. We are already looking for it to be a strong area. We didn't want it to go, you know, really touch the 50 area. Because if it would have went to go touch the 50 area, that mean, that mean buyers are strong as hell and got it there. 
we want to see a sell off. Why? Because overall, we was in a selling market on H4. Overall, on H4, we had our bearish momentum and we got our bullish. We looking for this area to be a key area, right? So when it start to push, that's what we, when structures start to break on M1, that's exactly what we wanted to see, right? So that was a perfect trade for him. He took it. I missed it. Why? Because I was on a call. And then look, so let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So he's looking for a sell inside of here, right? If you were to scroll down to the one minute, we don't just take, we don't just look at the H4 all day. We wait for it to come back to our H4 areas. And as it's getting closer to my area, I now I'm on H1, right? Structure was broken. We was in a trade. Take it to the 27 extension. But look at, but also look look at more structure on H, H, H4. This is a counter trend. Remember how I took the buy? This is clearly a trying to counter trend, created a, a higher low. Mm -hmm. Broke through the higher high, right? So you could have drawn up a counter trend fit, right? Counter trend fit. Was this fit, was this fit broke? Was this fit line broken? Yeah. Broke. So when it breaks, what do we need to see? Same stuff. What do we need to see? Because this, this uptrend, counter trend, uptrend was broken. So now we know we can possibly be looking for a downtrend. In order for us to get a downtrend or get an entry on a downtrend, we need to see bearish, which it already gave me bearish, and we need to see what bullish, which would have been that pull back on the fifty there. Yeah, real yeah. easy, bro. Where do yeah. we take the trade? When it came back in my fifty area, what am I doing? Scrolling down to my what? One minute. If you would have went to the one minute, you would have clearly seen it was steady pushing up. And then after so long, it started breaking back below. And once it broke that trend line on one minute, we would have been in the entry. And where do we take it? 27 extension, 27 extension, boom, smacked it with one candlestick, really. Boom, out of there. Same stuff. I ain't gonna lie, this, this one, this, right here was a losing trade for us. All my students was catching these trades. They was getting paid, bro. Everybody was getting paid. People was happy. Dude offered me to buy me a car, bro. I was like, bro, keep your no, money. For, no, no doubt, bro. You can come and visit me over here, bro. I'll show you good <laughs> No, no, good. bro, I'm straight. I'm making up, I'm making money, bro. Like, I, I'm cool. I appreciate it, but like, bro, like, yeah. structure is broken. We waited on, um, Bullish, bullish momentum. So this is bearish, bullish. Most of that, some of it, this is when it got tricky. Some of them were scrolling, like they don't just take the trade inside the 50 mark. Some of them, uh, yes, it's inside our 50 mark, but do we just enter because it's there? No, we scroll down to the one minute and wait for structure. Some of them took this trade, but then look at look what news did. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes news, they, they do this. So this was a losing trade for majority of my students last week. Yeah, it popped, yeah. Yeah, but like, but, but look, I had some people from China who was like late to the groove and when the market was already up here, they had took a sale and look at, <laughs> they took the sale up here and caught it and it was yeah. like, oh, so much, look, 85,000 pips and we're just riding yeah. down because they, they knew that this was a downtrend. So they was just looking for like this to come back and retest these areas on, um, H1, if you if you look at it on H4, it's really, you don't really see a lot of pips. I mean, a lot of stuff going on, but if you look at it at, uh, if you look at it on H1, it's a lot of stuff going on in this area. I forgot where was it. Basically right here, we broke, came back, small retest, came back, retest, and he had got in once this structure right here was broken. Cause he was late to the groove. If he had took something like this, what majority of them like took him, he would have lost too. But like, we're going to lose trades. Don't get me, that's what I'm saying. But like, uh, who was that? Roland, right? Yeah. So now we getting closer to the end of this week, right? We clearly see it was in a downtrend. Lower highs, lower low, lower, lower low, lower high. Lower low, kind of a like retest and broke through. Let 
Right. And then what do we see by the end of this week? We see what a trend line get broken. We start to see push above this lower low. <clears throat> you see it? Push this is last week. Last week. The end of last week is what I'm saying. So yeah. like you you said that you remember you was like I was confused, you know, he's in a downtrend and this was, yeah. like, it was messing you up, right? Yeah. So what well, I'm this is a is an interesting time as it is. It's, it's sort of very easy structure at the same time. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, no, I got you. So good. I, I'm not saying you're like wrong or anything. I'm just like helping coach it up. A no, oh, yeah, of course. This is so helpful, bro. You yeah, understand? Exactly, bro. If you study this and use it, bro, by next summer you'd be riding around, you'd be riding Lamborghini or something. Yeah. So like this lower low, we got our lower lows because it was clearly a downtrend. Pointed out. Now we're starting to see this lower low get broken, right? And then it even gave us a candlestick to close above this lower low. Even like this lower low was broken as well. So now that's telling me what this trend. And then if you draw the trend line from the line chart, the trend line was broken, right? Yeah. So what did that? So what did that indicate that this downtrend is starting to become weak? So now we got bullish breaking through this trend line. What do we need in order to draw up our fit? Yeah. Bearish, bearish momentum start to happen in here. Where do we take a trade? That's all I needed, bro. Real talk. Boom. Easy. Yeah. People say, I mean, you scalper, your strategies for baby time frames, one minute time frame, bro. You're a scalper, scalper, scalper. Dude, I'm not a scalper. I'm just no, waiting. you I'm you waiting. can apply this to a bigger time frame, too. Exactly, bro. Everything is structure. It's no it's structure. It's, it's structure. Yeah. It's no strategy. People say this your strategy. It's not yeah. my strategy. It's structure. No, yeah. It's just I just structure, understand yeah. it. You feel me? People and say what happens. I can take this one trade. That's what, bro. Go look, look. Go look at my page. I was stuck in this buy over the weekend. I was, kind of, bro. You, you, you trade US thirty. You got to be on the charts. Over the weekend, I'm steady looking at my charts because I'm still nervous. Like not nervous, but I'm like, damn, like, I, damn, you know, I'm, I, I was up three thousand dollars over the weekend. But like, go look at my trade. I was, I was up on this, on this, on this buy. I was looking for this move. Like I was, I was already in on the buy. Why? Because I seen structure. I seen this lower low. Lower low yeah. was broken. Came back, had a candlestick to close above this lower low. Now and I was just looking for the bearish momentum. Came back, gave me bearish momentum, and when and like I said, just because this is inside the fifty or sixty one point eight area, I don't just jump in. I got to go down to the one minute and seeing one minute gave me a clean, decent. It was like after after this uh, after this kind of stick. but it, all this kind of stick was just giving me a clean um, downtrend. Nothing was telling me to buy. Then once it started to break above. My entry was so I was I was on call too. My entry was so late. I was like somewhere right here after we had start pushing off the fifty. And this so, still didn't matter. <laughs> but it still didn't matter, bro. I still mean like, <laughs> like it was yesterday, Monday, thirteen grand. Yeah, and, I get it. and if you go to my page, I got in on a sale right here. But I ain't gonna lie, this sale had me nervous. Why? Because it was consolidating like crazy, and then. I knew that we look. I, I took it and I got out. It, you go to my page again, bro. I think I got because somebody asked me about this yesterday. I got out. It was like. It was like exactly. Let me see. It was seven. It was seven four. Seven or something like that. Seven four. four. Basically, I got out right right here or somewhere exactly before it reversed it. I got out at like 4 a.m. because I was on. Call. But why, why not hold? Why not hold it though? I, I I I knew the hold, bro. But I went to sleep, and I was like, bro, you know, just because I had already got out my buys, I had closed my buys, and then I had jumped in on sales. That's how I made the 13 grand. And once it started to come back here, I was looking for a pullback. Honestly, I'm gonna show you what I was looking for. Because this 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 candlestick. Kind of it started pushing up here, it had a gap. And usually I'll be looking for like gaps to refill, right? It gave me a gap. So I was honestly looking for something like this. And I thought it was gonna do this. 
So I had closed my, and then we was also at a key area. So before we even started, like I had my mar I had my marks lined up. I had my lower lows from the previous week. You could have you, you could have looked at that as your um your third higher low, technically. Third high, yeah, exactly. But like, bro, I, I went to sleep as it was pushing down. So as it was pushing down, I got out the market, right? As it was pushing down, I like why be greedy? I seen thousand some dollars or two thousand or something, and I got out and I was looking for the market to come here. But it never came here. Why? Because I was looking for this gap to be filled. It really never came and filled that gap back. Why? You see it? Yeah. Usually, usually when it's a gap, it comes back and fill it. So, so you didn't take it? Yeah. So I, I missed it. So I, so I was like, OK, I'm going to just wake up at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, looking for it to be here in this area, right? And I was going to go down to the one minute and take the bot. Bro, I talked about I this. I missed it, too. Bro, I talked yeah. about this move since, like, last Tuesday, right? Yeah. Why? Why? Look, structure doesn't change, bro. Structure, structure. If you go to the one minute, uh, if, if you go to the weekly, right? What do we clearly see on US thirty weekly? Even if you want to, like, so point, you can use all this. So it, we are clearly in a uptrend, right? I've been talking about this move for like since last week. This was our last higher high in this uptrend. Yeah, we got one up here. Right. Boom. This was it broke through this higher high, right? You agree? So this was the higher high, came down, retested this trend line, pushed up, breaking through this higher high. If this wanted to continue to be a, an uptrend, it would have came back to this higher high. Touched it, left wicks, and continue to push up. Did we get that? No. We broke through, but we broke back below this um higher high right yeah so when we break back below and also we're starting to break through this trend line it gave us bearish if so it's going to be going down for a while I, that's what i'm hoping bro right so it broke it, it broke right below the higher high closed below that higher high so that tells me that the momentum this uptrend may be coming to an end so now i can start drawing up my fit boom but I need it. We haven't had a bullish candlestick, right? The way that I draw my fibs, I, I'm looking for a bullish, right? So I was already, I was already looking for this candlestick to be bullish. Why? Because when it goes bullish, where where are we looking for to take this trade? At the end of that bullish. When we got our bearish and bullish on a weekly, where are we looking to take our trade? We already came back below this higher high, right? We broke back below this higher high and we're breaking through this trend line, closed below the trend line, right? But we need what in order to draw our fit? We got bearish, we needed what to draw our fit? Um, Come on, talk bullish. to me. I'm that bullish candle. I'm mute. Exactly. Trace me. Exactly. Exactly. We need to see a retracement candle, some type of bullish. It gave us bearish. We broke below this higher high. This was the higher high, broke above it. If it wanted to continue to be an uptrend, it would have came back to this higher high and continue to push up. But it came back below, which indicates, which indicates that this uptrend is becoming weak. So now I need to see some bullish for a retracement. But in order for me to even draw up my fib, I need to see a bullish candlestick. I can't use my fib like this. We was always told to use it like this, you know, high and bottom, and then try to take a sell at the 38. But the way I draw my fib is I need bullish. So I was already, I said, man, look at this, you know, exhaustion candlestick. This next week's candlestick is going to be bullish as hell, right? That's why I held that trade, bro. And then if you look, go to the M, go to the M4. Do we not already see bullish momentum, this train, this change of trend already happening? We just spoke about this. This lower low was broken, right? This lower low was broken. So what do we do? We drew up our fit. We got our bearish momentum right here. We took the trade right here in this 50 because we're looking for it to even go back up. So now if you, if like I'm giving y'all free game right here, if you're patient enough, you can be ready to take the sale. I think this is a demo account. 
I'm already in the cell now. Why? Because, I mean, don't do this. Don't do this, what I just did. But we are in a key area. If you go down to one minute and start looking at structure, look at this. One minute. We got our barriers. I'm telling this look like a break of structure to me. Broken, breaking through structure. And now I'm going to be in drawdown. Why? Because it's going to pull back up to this area. But like, you could be, be, if you're patient enough and understand higher time frames, you can take that cell. We broke, but we break, we broke back below this higher high. We need, in order, the, the way that I draw my fit, I need to see a bullish to get a retracement before I can actually sell it into this downtrend. We was already in the uptrend, now I'm looking for a downtrend, right? Yeah. So now, like, so now, it's just a patience game at this point. It, Q, Q Banks, he trades on higher time frames for a reason. He trades on, he, he goes to the monthly looking structure, goes to the weekly looking structure, and then goes to like the daily and draw up his fit. But he has enough money in his account to be going on those bigger, that big of a, um, you know, that big of a time frame. For a lot of new traders in this in this course or whoever is in this academy or whatnot, we can't be looking at that big of a high, higher yeah. time frame. We yeah. can't even take entries on the M1 and M13 like he do. He on takes the trades on the, the M he takes yeah. trades on the uh, the. Uh, yo, mute your mics, bro. McQueen, is that you? Who is that? Meet your mic. So he t he takes trades on the fifteen minute, but we can't we can't afford to be waiting on the fifteen minute time frame to to uh, make his move. We can't be waiting on it. We have to go to M one so that we won't be in drawdown. Now you see how I just took those sales. Now I'm going to be in drawdown a couple thousand dollars. If I don't have enough in my account, I can't experience this drawdown. Look, I can't experience this drawdown. But most traders, they try to take trades based off of, you know, structure on M15 instead of going to the M1. Like I always say, if you're basing your structure off M15, don't get me wrong, you can still get the clean setup on M15, right? But like, you just have to be more patient or sometimes you're going to miss the overall move that you could have caught on M1. Like, don't get me wrong. You can still be looking for structure. But we're looking for this to go down anyway, so it doesn't even matter. But, like, overall, we clearly see structure getting changed on the M15, I mean, on, on, on a weekly. It pushed up, it came back below this higher high, the last higher high. So our fed play, we know the way that we draw the fed, we need to see a bearish, can, we need to see bullish candle. We are inside our zone. So now we are on the charts. I was looking for this move to happen all week. People saying, oh, you know, I missed the trade. I missed the trade. Yeah, and, and it's going to happen, bro. A lot of people are probably riding this wave with this uptrend, you know. And then I believe, I don't know, it, it don't have, the market doesn't respect nobody. It doesn't have to happen. But I believe that this market is going to push and it's going to go, bro. It's going to go back and probably retest this, this, this low or it can be pushing and create a new lower low and continue to fall and come touch the 66 moving average. You feel me? Yo, I'm mute your mics, bro. I don't, I don't really like me. Whoever with that background or whatever, you stay muted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't like mic. Um, Talk to me. Yeah, that makes sense though. Yeah. But I, like I said, I was already looking for that move to happen. Because H4 was giving me a signal already. It broke above this lower low. And now I was looking for it to go back to our key area where we take our cell 50 area, which is in there right now. And now I could just be patient and wait on structure to break. Whether it's the M1, M1 or, you know, wait on structure on M, uh, H1. If, if we look in the H1, our trend line looks like this. Right, boom. So we could wait for this get broken, and then probably next tomorrow, it'll give us something like this. Come back to this fifty area. This is what possibly I, I'm not. I'm, I don't try to predict the market, but most of the time, when it keep giving you the same stuff over and over, 
it'll break it it'll push down for the end the end of this day and then in the next candlestick we, we're looking at candlesticks this daily candlesticks on the next day come back give us a wick inside this area or something and then it, it might continue to fall back and we already see bro on a monthly let's look at this monthly too like each time frame it's the same stuff but all is nothing but candlesticks bro have we talked about any indicators Oh. We talked about any RSI, any divergence. I know some people was talking about divergence and whatnot, but no. Look at look at look at structure. Look at candlesticks. Pushed yeah, up, that's all you got. Yeah. Pushed up, created a higher high, came down. Is this a, considered a break of structure? No, that's a retest candlesticks. Two of them pushed up, came right back down for a retest. So this is not really a break of structure. This is a fake out before they actually go in the direction they want to go, which would be down here. TP. I don't know why it's not working. Uh, because I'm on too big of a time frame. But like, bro, this is a fake out. If it was this, if this was a break of structure, this candlestick would have had to close above and it would have came back, gave me a like a little touch. And when it gave me that touch, then it would have continued to push higher. But no, it pushed up, came right back below, and now it's going back to retest for the weekly. Because like I said, you need the bullish mo you need a bullish momentum. Now we are back inside our zone. And as we are inside our zone, we are looking for what? The overall sell it off. Why? Because st structure is starting to get broken. This trend line is starting to get disrespected. We broke, we this trend line is starting to get broken. We had a candlestick to close below this um, trend line. We pushed back below these higher highs. So now we knew once it gave me bearish, we need bullish to go up. And when we got bearish and bullish, we look for a sell off here, right? Boom. Y'all getting it? Yeah. Easy. It's clarity. No more guessing. No more, you know, trying to jump in trades and nine key areas and getting our money snatched. Even if you don't want to look at, you know, higher time frames, if you just be patient and look at H4, it's still the same stuff. Structure, structure, no matter if you want M1 or, you know, structure, structure. Downtrend. Got broken. Now we are in a what uptrend. However, you want to play it. Look at structure on this day. Since we are back up here, let's see. It was giving us, you know, uptrend vibes. It was giving us uptrend vibes right here. So we know this higher high was a key area. So that's what I'm saying. Like tomorrow, it could push back up and give us a wick and hit somewhere in this zone. So we know in the uptrend, higher highs are important and the downtrend, lower lows are important. But don't get me wrong, this was a lower low too. So now we are floating inside of this zone. Tomorrow, what could happen is, like I said, I don't try to predict the market, but sometimes, bro, after seeing it over and over again, you can get a feel for it. We might get a push down, hit, and then go back up to retest. And it's gonna probably consolidate for a minute. And then it's gonna start making this move down. And then that next week candlestick might push up just one more bit, give us a longer wick. And then it's gonna fall back in structure or back in trend for the monthly. This monthly candlestick, I truly believe that it's gonna give us a wick and it's gonna fall all the way back down somewhere like here. This is just gonna be a long wick. That's what I believe. Is it gonna happen? I don't know. You feel me? But just based off structure, it should be ready to fall inside of this area, which is our key 50 to 60.8, uh, 50 to 61 point, uh, 61.8 area, right? For the weekly time, for, for the weekly candlestick. Yeah. Easy, bro. Y'all got any questions about anything? Like, hold on. Before we, before look, like, like I usually like towards the end, people always say, "Does this apply to other time frames?" Let's look at some stuff on GU because I, I trade GU sometimes. I haven't traded in a minute, but 
Let's, let's, let's ignore what's going on currently. Let's look at structure. So GU, if we're looking to take a trade this week, we own here, right? Boom. We clearly see it as a what? Downtrend, right? So now, since it's a downtrend, we want to point out key areas, push down here, push up. I'm never going to count this. I'm going to count it right here. Boom, pushed up. It's a downtrend. I'm really just focused. I'm really just focused on like the lower lows. I'm looking for retracements. Um, hold on one moment, one moment. Came down, created another lower low, but came back retest. Let me just count this one. So now we could just highlight it because we know when the market come back to these areas, we're looking to take a trade, right? We don't want to take a trade until we come back to these areas. You agree? Yeah. Yep. Boom. It would save you time. Because the markup was something we weren't doing like that either. And that's what I was, I, I didn't put nothing anymore because I was like, I was, that wasn't, I didn't feel like it was right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all done it, bro. And Q don't really teach like early early markups or he'd be looking farther back. And like I said, he starts on a monthly, bro. Like people with smaller accounts shouldn't be looking on a monthly. What he teaches is how he sees the market, bro. And he can afford to, you know, start that high. What he teaches is not for y'all, bro. Don't get me wrong. And you're going to learn it. Whenever you start to teach everything, me teaching you is helping me. It's helping me to stay focused. It's helping me to stay disciplined. And it's helping me to iron out my own, you know, mistakes. So when he's teaching, he's teaching himself. He's just refreshing it. And as he's refreshing it, he's recording it to the point where other people can learn from it. But basically he's teaching himself. He's just, that's no, what I get it. Yeah. yeah. So now, so now yeah. he starts on a monthly, but like we starting on this, this four hour. And but if you, if you got money, then you're going to be somewhere towards there. Yeah. Yeah. Bro. We, Keep studying this, bro. We all finna get money. You feel me? I, yeah, I like hell see, yeah. I like to see. I like to see everybody winning. If you can, if you and a, a lot of pro traders, they will stop getting paid if they taught everybody this. They rather give signals because they understand it and get paid. But I'm showing everybody how to get to the money themselves. We have not oh, talked yeah. about no indicators. We have not talked about you know some guru giving us signals. I'm showing you how to get down and detailed on. Look, so. We clearly see it's a downtrend, right? And by the end of this week, what do we start to see? We start to see what? Breaks. Breaks. Breaks of what? Lower lows. The breaks, low, uh, the lower lows. breaks of lower lows because it was a downtrend. We starting to see breaks of lower low. What is that an indicator for? That the trend may be what? Changing. Changing. It's becoming weak. So when it gave me a break above, and it actually gave me a candlestick to close above, what do I need? It already gave me bullish. What do I need? Bearish. You're looking, you're looking for the 15, 60 retracement to enter? Yeah, you're right. Now, where do we take the trade? We got our bullish, and when this candlestick right here is pushing down, clearly an entry. When it's coming, when it's coming back to our 50, I'm not going to scroll down for a second. Like when it's coming back to our 50 mark, what are we doing? Going down to the what? One minute. But did it get inside our 50 mark? Yes. And I'm pretty sure because look at this momentum that pushed it back up. You've seen structure. Structure has to happen inside these candlesticks. All these candlesticks are structured on M1. But look, we clearly see a downtrend getting broken. The trend line got broken. We start seeing lower lows get broken. So now we got our bullish, we need our bearish. And it gave me bearish, came back to the 50. Now I'm in this buy over the weekend again, because we're taking it where? Is that T negative 27? Negative 27, TP. So now we are, and look, even this day, even this day before it actually truly ended, it came close to my 27. Well, I'll be greedy, bro. The market's gonna close anyway. Take that 500 some pips, 498 pips. That's a lot. Get out the market. 
Also, look, even if you don't, even if you don't like truly understand, you know, trend lines or fibs or whatnot, where do we break and have a retest? We broke right here. This is right, this right here is not a retest. This is just strong, bearish momentum. It broke, came back, retested it. What happened? Fail. Y'all see it? Yeah. Or 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 just or let's let's do it this way, right? Showing you multiple ways of how to be confluent. It's all confluence, bro. Confluence. Hugh talks about it all the time. Confluence, confluence. But I, I just do mine a little different from the way that I draw on my fibs. So we got downtrend, right? We start seeing a break of structure in this area. Break of structure start to happen in this area right here, right? Start to break above. So now I know this is going bullish. Is it not? Yeah, it's going bullish. I mean, I don't want to, I just know that it's going bullish from there. So when we got bearish and bullish, we can what? Draw the fibs. Where do we take ourselves? Pips, 1300 pips. And I'm pretty sure nothing is telling me, this is 27 extension, but nothing is telling me to probably get out this market as well. Let's look at it. It hit our 50, it's coming back to our 50 mark. We already on a one minute, looking for a breaker structure so we can get the best possible entry and no drawdown. But it, it was in our 50 area on a bigger time frame on H, H1, I mean on H4. But look at this area, I'm gonna highlight it. Nothing is telling me to get out to sell. You could have caught all of those pips. But opportunity, that's crazy. Look at this fall. Look at this fall from the 50. Look, even I could just mark it up a little bit. Because when it's getting closer to the 50, what am I doing? Drawing up fibs, right? Seeing structure breaks. Structure having broke. It's clearly still an uptrend. Structure start to break right here. Came back, retest for the double top. Boom. The game down, gave me my bearish. Gave me my bullish momentum in this area. What do we check the trade? Somewhere in here, right? We're in a sale. So we in our sale right there. Came back, retest. Our stop loss is somewhere far. Like I say, I'm willing to lose at least $500. So stop loss would have been, if I'm using just one standard a lot, stop loss would have been somewhere far. I'm not even going to look. But stop loss did not get triggered at all. But look, when we are in this sale, what is, what is telling me to get out? It's straight going down. Until we start to break some of these lower lows, it's when I'm starting to look to get out. I could have really been, why be greedy? I'm holding it, I'm holding it. Nothing is telling me to get out. I see 1,700 pips, 1,600 pips. That's enough, bro, get out. Now on this lower low, it's starting to get broken above. So if anything, I would have got out somewhere right here. As we're approaching back to this lower low, broke above this lower low, I'm getting out. Cause now I know what trend may be changing. So you could have held that and got all 17, 1600 pips and been done for that whole week. Like I said, I'm putting that when I say, I don't even really trade like Forex pairs, but I'm putting 50, I'm putting 10 standard lots at the least. 10 standard lots. Market drop 1600, that's $16,000. 10 standard lots. I'm putting it on there, bro. I'm putting, I'm putting it. At least a 50 standard lot on there, bro. It's 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 a it's a baby pair. It doesn't move as fast as US 30. And I want to get paid. And this is a great entry. I trust my analysis. I trade, I trust everything that I do. When people say, bro, you're stacking, bro, you're stacking. I'm not stacking. I know exactly what I'm doing. I know the market. Why not? What drawdown? So if I take the trade right here, what drawdown am I in? If I take trade right here in purple, what 24 pips? If you're using a, a 10 standard lot, that's no more than $240. I'm on my big account. I'm on my big account. I'm willing to risk at least $10,000 on my big account. Five at the least. I can take this. This is a clean setup. You're stacking. You're stacking. I'm not stacking. I know exactly what I'm doing. So now when I have a 50 to 100 standard lot and the market drops right here, I'm already up $30,000. I'm out the trade. I don't have to hold it no more. This is not a yeah. small 
I'm, I'm out to trade. Market gave me, you know, 300 pips if I'm using a 50 cent a lot. You do the math. That's too much. That's a lot of money. I'm out to trade. I don't have to hold it. For somebody with a small account, yes, they got to get, you know, they're looking for it to get to a 27 extension, which is great. But I don't want to even experience drawdown. Like, I mean, not even draw a, a, a retest. When I'm on a big, when I'm on my big account, I'm out to trade. As soon as markets start to change, it reverse, start pushing above the 66, I'm out. I take that. That's a good day. That's 23 bands that I made. You feel me? I'm done. I don't have to trade no more. Yeah, then you just, will you take the next one coming back up? Or I mean, yeah, I, I'm still going to be confident. So if, if it's coming back up and I start to see structure changing again at that 50, I'm gonna try to get back in there. I'm gonna try to get back in it, get back in the trade. Yeah. Same stuff. Yeah. Now, it was getting trend line. I'm gonna try to do it quick because I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta go in a minute. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, you might have been, would have been, it would have been draw down a little bit more, but who cares? You're on an M1 entry somewhere up in here, no more than 37 pips in drawdown. And now we know it pushes out the 50 and go where to the 27 extension. Most of the time, every single time, 90, 95% of the time, 27 extension. If you draw it the right way, bears and the bullish, you know, and, and, and since we own this, bro, let me show you another reason. Um, I think somebody, matter of fact, I'm just good. Uh, somebody said, I don't even know what Nas was until like, the other day, somebody said, this is work on, you know, Nas or whatnot. Actually, ignore this because stuff is going on right now. But look at Nas. What do we clearly see? Four hour. Clearly see uptrend. Uptrend vibes. All right? Start the break. Once you start the break, this is bull this is bearish going down. We start to see bullish right here. But then it truly never really broke. I guess it's starting to break above some of this, right? But did it get to our 50 mark? No. Even though we got it down here, it never got to our 50 mark. So it's continued to fall. So we just following with it. We're not even, we're looking for a sell, right? Because it broke this trend line. We're looking to sell it and it's 50 mark. It never truly got close. So we just following with it. And even if you got on M1 and seen break a structure, you could have said that we got closer to 50 and took that sell as well. But like now that it's starting to, you know, change structure, right? These lower lows right here, we're starting to get broken right here. It broke above. These lower lows got broken when it came above here. It came down, retested probably with a candlestick, two candlesticks. And now we got what? I'm considering all this just a bearish momentum. And now the trend is starting to change. Broke the candlestick. Now we got bullish. And when we got bearish and bullish, where do we take the trade? It's not our 50 mark. Where do we get out the trade? Negative 27. Negative 27 extension. Candlesticks are candlesticks. Market structure is market structure. It doesn't matter what pair you're on. Damn. You good? Like, and then look, let me show you again a reason why I draw my fifths away. It came from experience, but. Where is this pair going to go, you think? So I can understand. What, what was that? Where is this right now? This pair, where is this going to go right now, you think? Generally. So I can understand. US the 30? I'm on US 30 now, bro. I wanted to show y'all something else. Yeah. Uh, That's fine. Show me something else. That's fine. US 30, remember, we was looking for that overall sell-off because on, on a weekly, on a weekly look at structure, we was, uh, this higher highs got broken. But it came back and pushed below these these higher highs, and yeah. So we was looking for what a bullish candlestick, so we can draw up our fib. Now it's giving me my bullish candlestick, right? And now we know we want to look for a sale somewhere in this area that is at. That's why I had entered these sales. But did I look for structure? No. But like that's why we had entered. That's why I had entered these sales, right? Because now we're in a zone. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then look, also look. Trend lines are starting to get broken. Trend line is starting to get broke. It got broken. That next month, it closed below it. So now I need bullish momentum. 
to give me a retrace back to our 50 area. And look, we're starting to get in profit, even though I took these like stupid trades. We are inside our, it's a better trade. You feel me? It's not even a stupid trade. It's a better trade because it's good to go down to one minute and look for structure. And look, structure is happening, bro. This stuff is going over, happening over and over again. Remember, I had to do sales right here. But if I was patient and waited on, you know, this move to break, it broke, right? Trail line was broken. And when it broke, gave me my bearish, I needed what? My bullish going up. Would have took a trade someone inside of here. And yeah, we using a one standard lot, but usually I use a 0.10. Drawdown would have been no more than $100, $97. At the most, my, my stop loss is now somewhere up here, you feel me? But it don't even matter because we are looking for an over, like I took these sales, just, you know, just playing around and took it. But overall, we're look, this is the key area that we're looking for a sale to happen anyway. And, we've, and, and we look clearly in the downtrend but now we're starting to push back to these. Look, it's an uptrend, isn't it? Totally in general. It's, it's, still, it's still it's still a downtrend, bro. Structure is already breaking. Because it hasn't shown you any bearish movement yet, though. This is not bearish. Look at no, look I'm at, saying wouldn't wouldn't it have broke it then? No, look at this. We pushed down and created what? Lower low. Broke through the lower low. Right, this is on yeah. the now, and created what a new lower low. This is a downtrend. Yeah, broke through this lower low, created a new lower low. Is this not a? This is a downtrend. Clearly, this stuff right here could be a. This stuff right here is. A, this is the counter trend for this downtrend. This right. is the counter trend for this overall downtrend. That's why if you draw the that 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 uh, Fibonacci on. We broke below, even a weekly is telling the truth. We broke above these higher highs, came back below this, uh, these higher highs. Yeah, but, yeah, because it broke that 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 higher high, yeah, so the previous one. Right here. But then look, even if- I get it. Even if you didn't understand it, like, look at this. This is that a lower low, right? This is a lower low. On, and this is on a daily. We broke through this lower low. Have we came back to retest this lower low? No, we broke through this lower low. Have we came back to retest this lower low? Now we're starting to retest this lower low. Look at this, this lower low. So this was a lower low. We came back, and don't get me wrong, this is just bearish momentum. When you break through something, this is bearish momentum. I want to see a bullish coming back. I need to see bullish coming back to retest the level. Mm -hmm. This is not bullish. This is straight bearish momentum to get past there. It struggled a little bit, but it got past there, as you see. Because if it was struggling hard, it would have just came back with a bullish and kept going. But it still mm -hmm. wanted to go down. It still wanted to go down and gave me, you know, bearish going down. So I need to see bullish. Matter of fact, candlestick. Boom. Bearish, bullish. Where do we take the trade? Yeah, 50. 50, out of there. Bearish, bullish. Someone here, 50. Scroll down to smaller time frames to get the good entry. We broke through with this bearish candlestick. We have not came back to retest. So I'm already looking for the market to get up here anyway. You feel me? But if you go to the weekly, if you go to the weekly, we clearly see that we have broke back below these higher highs right and now instead of thinking that it's going to continue to go up i can i truly believe it's going to just fall back in trend on this daily because this daily was a downtrend this is just a counter trend and usually when the market pushes hard as hell after seeing a downtrend this is nothing but a counter trend kind of trends push hard as hell bro counter trends push hard as hell so that's why we got this big move and i and that's why i said a lot of traders, I don't know who's to say what the market is going to. This market can push higher and can and create some new highs, but usually right. the market would do a big push on a Sunday or Monday to get everybody in a buy. What about the daily? For, if you go back to the if you go back to the daily, look at the previous back <clears throat> to the left. 
bottom left. Right here? Like it didn't, yeah, it didn't see it like, that's, it that's didn't break much. that level, right? That, that's too much. That's too much. I don't care about what, what happened back there, bro. I'm cared about what's going on now. If anything, on a daily, what I'm looking for, right, is this lower low that just got broken. This lower low and this downturn got broken, right? So now I'm looking for a pullback. I, 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 so now that, you know, when the lower low get broken, what that mean? We want, we looking now for a pullback to our 50 to 61, uh, 50 to 61.8 area. So it would have been somewhere inside of here. And now when it comes right. out of here, I'm looking for a buy. If it wants to continue to go buy, like go high, I still need a pullback. We have not got our bearish momentum, right? We usually wait for that bearish momentum candle because we just broke above a lower low. None of, nothing right. that's giving me bearish yet, right? So now I'm thinking, and just for me knowing, we already know that we are inside of our true Fibonacci on a weekly 50 to 61.8 area. So I'm looking for a sell-off and even right here to even come back because we just broke above a lower low. We have to come back and retest that area. So that's just confluence. That's just lining up different time frames to time frame. We had to come back to the weekly to, to retest the 50 something area. If you go to, if you want to base it off the daily, we just broke above this lower low, which means we need to see bearish momentum coming back to retest our 50 area. Two fibs draw the opposite way, but it's just, it's lining up, right? Mm -hmm. Study this. Yeah, so you're selling, you're selling at the 50 now. Yeah, if anything, I'm selling it. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. So if anything, I'm selling it and my TP will be somewhere like down here or something. Or like the 50, boom, for $78,000. Because it's a point, it's, it's a standard lot. $78,000, boom, get out the market. That's just how, yeah. and Q, Q pay, he placed one or two standards on it. So now instead of 78,000, he's making a hundred and some thousand dollars, 140. Yeah. Easy. Yeah, you could even do five, 10, bro. Exactly. Yeah. Now you're making 200K dollars in a day, sometimes in a day. You, you guys getting it? I'm going to record it. I'm going to uh, upload this as well. It's going to be on there probably tomorrow. Okay, oh, yeah. yeah. Just looking ready to ask how soon we the video. What was that? Yeah, cool. I was just getting ready to ask how soon can we get the video, but that's cool. I'm good with tomorrow. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it takes like it takes long as hell because it'd be usually it'd be three to like we've been on this call since what like at least 12 30. Like we've been on here for a minute, so it'd be taking long as hell. Um, another thing is like some of these links that I've been sending out sometimes it'd be saying it, it reached this playback, um, playback limit or something like I guess you can only watch it certain I'm trying to fix that now but once we get off this call bro hit me ask me for the link and I'm gonna send you the link and once you get that link watch those videos I'm teaching the same stuff over and over because it's the structure I'm not using indicators I'm teaching everything that I know structure wise watch it learn from it practice it the more you practice it you be riding limbos too you be living yeah bro this is yeah basically, crazy helpful, bro. yeah, basically, it looks pretty simple. Just yeah, trace, um, enter as soon as it hits that 50, you follow the trend and ride it all the way down again, exactly. So it's, it's like kind of trending and then following the trend trace. So it's like exactly. double ways. So um, this, this, this definitely looks like, like a yeah, 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 one of my top methods. I'm, I'm gonna definitely like practice this, yeah, but bro. Remember, if you haven't practiced counter trending, don't don't try it. Just stay. The trend is your friend. Stay in overall. Like instead of like everybody was looking to catch this buy, why not just wait for it to come to our 50, 60, you know, area on a weekly. But once you start to get good, because like now it's inside our 50, 60 area from our fib on a weekly. But like once you start to get great and good, now you can start catching these entries. We already seen structure on, you feel me, H4 break above this lower low right here. So now we could have yeah. been buy all the way up to that area and then catch it falling lower than these lows. Now you just win Yo. it. You're a winning trader. You're a trader now. Yeah, it's dope, man. This is trading. Yeah. Appreciate it, you know? Yo. Yo, I got a last question, fam. I appreciate everything you've done too, bro, for real. Um, as far as like the business side, like are you using um, um, like Coinbase to get the Bitcoin, so you can send it to KOT, uh, um, like in a in a corporate name, or using a personal. Nah, bro. So I use personal, which 
bro, I'm starting to make a lot of money. So like, I, I, I'm eventually, I'm got to get a business. Yeah, I got to get an LLC, so it won't be taxing everything. Uh, it's actually in Q course because I, like, when I brought us course, bro, like I said, I only I haven't really went through the whole thing. I just watched like, like two confluence videos, and I seen some of his older videos. But no, I got you. I'm gonna go check. I'll let it. you know. I'll let you know then. Yeah. Because I'm almost finished, like with figuring it out. Okay, I just wanted to see if you had did it or it was I had a question, but never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Yo, but this is dope, bro. It's best. I got two questions. Yo, uh, you mentioned about the link. Are the do you have videos that's already rendered that we can at least start watching before ours is ready? Yeah, bro. It's it's like six, seven videos on there, bro. Yo, you just got it right now. Hey, Boston. Yeah. Hey, Boston. One, one, one last question. If you have any 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 misunderstandings or like a, a little bit of confusion, can we hit you up? Yes, bro. That's that, like, when you pay the when you pay that fee, bro. You now have access to me. I talk to probably Wait. I talk to a thousand. I talk to a lot of people, bro. Each each morning about this stuff, bro. Is is and the, and at the academy alone is like 70, 80 people that I talk to. Great. If it's and, if it's as simple as it's shown here, and I can yes, I, I'm gonna definitely God. watch this. Screenshot it, screenshot it, record it. I had people from China, dude, dude from China recorded his whole analysis and sent it to me. And I was in my head, I said, dude, this dude is gonna be making a lot of money. He yes. sent it to my email. Do the same thing, bro. Screenshot it, draw it up. Even on Sundays, I want to see everybody markups. Go to the four hour, send me your markups. I want to see it. So I'm on the charts all day. Yeah, basically just from the four hour to the one minute and just head on and execute. Yes, execute. And then if the four hours not giving me what I want, like this move right here, if you turn on the if you turn on the H4, it's just one big move. It doesn't really give me enough details. What do we do? Yeah, to see more data. <clears throat> we'll go to H1, if anything. Go to H1. When we went to H1, it starts showing us our lower lows, lower lows. Now I see that my lower lows are getting broken. We are always looking for a retracement back to the 50, which was, would have been somewhere up here. But like I see these lower lows getting broken. So now I can counter trend and wait on my bearish momentum kind of stick. And now I'm looking to whatever my trend on. But look, let me show you another. 50, yeah. yeah, let me show you, let me show you another thing, bro. Like why I drop my fib the way, that, that way. Because all our lives, bro, we was always taught the high, the high, right? To the low. And we was always taught, you know, look for that sale at the 38. Look what happened. Money snatched. People don't know. We not entered this trade because our 50, from the way we draw our fit, our 50 mark is somewhere up here. But like most people were like, oh, you know, we starting to get that push off the 50. Look, and it's an hour chart, one hour, two hour, three hour, even came back and retested and still couldn't get past the 38. That's the, the most confident 38 trader in the world. Like he's he loved this right here. But look what happened. Got his money snatched. And then it fell in this direction. For us, we are comp like from the way that I draw my fib from the four hours, it looked like this. This candlestick right here is what broke through all of this, this stuff going on. I don't need, I don't care about what this little area did. I need that candlestick that broke and changed, broke through those lower lows. And this is nothing but one big move going down. This is one bearish move. Now I need to see bullish. So my first bullish would have been right there. Then it came back and gave me that. And then when this weekly, when this uh, day closed, this was a Sunday, when that opened, this is a good spot for my bullish momentum. Now I'm looking to take a trade inside my 50 mark. It keeps me from taking this bad trade right here that everybody else is taking, right? We don't want to take a trade until we start to push closer to my 50 mark. This is not close to my 50 mark. Not so now I'm saving, I'm saving money and not being in drawdown with this, with, with taking a sale right here. Y'all see it? Yeah. Easy, easy. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is the candlestick that broke. Now we got our bullish. Now we don't want to take our trade until we get to our 50 area, close to our 50 area. And what and when we get close to our 50 area, we are doing what? Scrolling down to what? One minute. 
and wait on structure to break there. So I'm, it, man. I'm gonna let y'all go, man. And like I said, Take you, care, bro. at the end of every call, I, I ask people, you know, leave a comment, hit the chat, bro. If you feel like this was a good, you know, lesson or a seminar or whatever webinar, just hit the chat, leave a comment. So, you know, tell the next person. Like I say, only reason I charge, bro, is because I was going to family members' houses. I was going spending. They didn't even know what a broker was. They didn't know what, a, a, you know, trading was. They didn't know what a kennel stick. They didn't know what trend line. Fib settings. I'm spending five or six hours with them. Yeah. The next week, they like, bro, I don't even, like, I'm done. Like, bro, I don't even want to do that no more. So I'm like, that's a spit in my face. Like, bro, they, I wasted all that time trying to break down a strategy and even set up broker accounts and stuff. And then they just like, you know, I'm cool off that, bro. I don't want to do it. So now I'm just paying for my time. And then I'm guaranteed, I'm, I'm positive that if you practice this, you're going to be making money. So that's the only reason I charge. But like, bro, if you can fully understand this, go help the next person, bro. Help the next person. Show them. You feel me? Yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah, bro. So I appreciate y'all, man, even giving me this opportunity. Like I said, God showed me this strategy, and I'm just basically trying to help everybody I can, man. Yeah, I make man, money, we all man. make money together, man. Hit the chat, leave a comment, hit the link, hit my messenger, and I will send you the link as well. I have one quick question before we get off. Yeah. So you see how the can lose the form right now on a dial one minute. Does this still give you the confidence to stay in this short? Right here? Yeah. This uh, is it's holding and it's on the overall uptrend. It still give you the confidence to hold this? So honestly, I, I, I'll be looking, I'll be looking to get out, but I still need it to start pushing back above this area. And I only be looking to get out so that I won't be losing too much money. Like if it started to push back and start to break structure with this this level, then I would have been looking to get out. But right now, I'll still be in. I'll still be in. Remember, this is the one minute. So if my entry was, if I would have did it right, my entry would have been somewhere in here. Or honestly, if you turn back on the line chart, this is where we broke through this uh, what, higher high or high, a lower low, because this was downtrend lower low. We broke through there. So my entry would have been right here. And yeah, we was in drawdown. Then we came back below, came back and retested it and pushed down again. So stop loss can be tight. When I'm trading again, like bro, when I'm trading against a bullish momentum, I don't even really like doing it. I think I spoke about it before we got on the call. This is a full out bullish momentum candlestick. Yeah. I'm waiting. I don't want to do that. This is a, this is bullish, like bullish candlestick. This right here showing me that exhaustion is something good. You know, now I can start, you know, feeling comfortable. But when it's a bull out, when it's a bullish candlestick, wait, wait for the next candlestick. When it's a bullish candlestick and I'm looking to take a sale and I clearly see that this is finna close bullish, I'm waiting on this next candlestick to look for an opportunity. Don't trade against the trend or candlestick because you can catch it either way. Don't trade against the candlestick. You feel me? So even then, I'm still not going to enter until I see probably tomorrow or see, you know, structure on this H4 candlestick going down. And even if it gives me a bearish momentum candlestick, it's still going to give me a retracement to the 50. You feel me? So you're going to catch trades. Be patient. If it was to fall all the way down here, I still know it has to come back to the 50 mark and then continue to fall. So if I miss it on the M1, it's still going to be more opportunities. Yeah. When it hits that fifty, and you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna take that sale, and then from there it's gonna go back up just to test. What you mean? On so the, the next, you, you, yeah. Well, in general, you just said it's gonna come down to the fifty right now, right? Uh, yeah. Let me make sure. Right now, so right now my fifth play would be because I'm looking at the weekly. And if it doesn't give me and then keep going up, then hey, it is what it is. You feel me? We're gonna, you know, sometimes it's good. To, yeah, it's all good, right? So right now I'm looking for a sell off in here. But right now I see even like this week, this mug might stay in this area and consolidate. It's already bullish, bullish as hell. It might even continue to push higher and then by the end of the week, come back and stay below the 60 mark. You feel me? It doesn't have to really truly stay 
inside the zone. Usually it will come to the 50 and push down. But on bigger time frames, when you're using a fib, the way that I use it, it can give you a wick above and then fall. That's why mm -hmm. that's why we scroll down to the one minute to get them entries because wicks is structure. Like it can push above this 60, 61.8 leave a long ass week and then come back and stay below this 50 and then mm -hmm. but we don't just yeah because we're in we go to m1 and look at structure structure is starting on oh, take it to the 27 and you're good keep doing yep. repeat repeat yep exactly yep 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 and like we see appreciation bearish we see bullish momentum we need to see at least some bearish momentum let's take a trade Practice it, practice it, practice it. Look, check out the other videos, bro. Check out the other videos. Check out this one once I drop it. Practice, screenshot, send me it. Hit my messenger. Leave, a, leave a comment. Where can we check the other videos? Huh? Where can we check out the videos? Hit me after this call, bro. Hit me, hit me after right. this call, and I'm going I'm to see you the link. Cool. cool. I'm going to see you the link. It's going to be the I'll just text you, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Leave a comment in the chat, bro, if y'all like this, bro, because I, I feel like it's good. Everybody needs it. Everybody needs this. This changing the game for everybody's trading, how they see the market. People passing their funded accounts, too. Right on, man. I appreciate y'all, boys, for allowing me to yeah, get on. I appreciate you. Appreciate hey, it, man. Y'all take care, for sure. For sure, for sure. Bye.